Good evening and welcome to the Class 4A first round playoff game between your Kiwani Boilermakers and the Peoria Notre Dame Irish. Uh, so glad you could be alongside. My name is Russ Hughes alongside Jeremy Peart. And we're looking forward to seeing a real good game tonight between these two teams. This playoff game, by the way, is brought to you by the State Bank of Anawan. I'm, I'm sorry. The State Bank of Toulon. Uh, also, Ace out of, uh, uh, out of uh, uh, Princeton, as well as Union Federal Savings Loan Association and People's National Bank. Uh, it should be a, a game that, uh, with all the water we've had today, uh, Jeremy, it, you, you think maybe that might have a difference in the game? Uh, we talked about turnovers, how bad they can be or how good they can be for your team, uh, depending on how things go. Uh, what is uh, your take on it so far? Well, yeah, as far as the weather goes, it's uh, definitely not as wet as it was uh, two weeks ago when we saw tons of rain for three days before. But it has been raining here today. The field is definitely wet, but it looks like the rain's kind of all moved out of the area for the evening. So nothing should be coming out of the sky tonight. So the, uh, they should be able to keep the ball fairly dry. You know, obviously with the turf field, no, uh, no mud concerns, and it actually drains really good if it's not pouring like it was two weeks ago against Newman. So uh, it'll be a little slick, but um, nothing too bad. The wind will probably be more of an effect than that because it's really howling out there. Those flags at the top of the goalposts are standing straight out. I would probably estimate probably about 20 mile an hour winds right now from the northwest. And, Blowing in some cold air for sure too. So first real football weather game that we've had this year and it's just in time for playoffs and what a great time for it to come. And a lot of wonderful things have happened for the Kiwani Boilermakers this year. A lot of uh, stars to put on their helmets. Uh, remember that was it uh, the Buckeyes are in the helmets over at Ohio State, right? And uh, but there are a lot of uh, Boilermakers on these helmets uh, for Kiwani this year, uh, uh, not not uh, just starting but not ending with uh, Brady Clark, the way that he has performed for his career, for that matter, uh, Jeremy. Uh, we we talked about that just a little bit. What it, what is your take uh, again on that? Uh? Tons of great players, great talent. What a great class. What a great group of uh, student athletes to watch. What a great group of coaches that have uh, put this team together, and it's been really fun to watch so far. And, we all hope that it moves on another week at least, and it should be a fun game tonight. A big opponent, obviously, as we uh, we're all we've all been talking about. They're out of the Big 12 conference. Play, uh, they are the smallest school in their conference, and so they definitely play uh, bigger bigger teams. You know, looking over their schedule for sure, we all noticed that. Oh well, they got uh, they got beat you know 50 to nothing by by a normal community. Rural Community is the number one seed in 7A in the state this year, so it's uh, it's a, a real tough conference that they were in. They beat some good teams. They uh, they lost to some good teams, and they're going to be playing another good team here tonight, the Kiwani, and uh, everyone hopes it should be an entertaining game for sure. And by the way, the, you mentioned the coaches. Let me just give the coaches uh, briefly. Of course, Mac Taylor is the head coach his first year. Hard to beat eight and one your first year, and, and just a tremendous job for this coaching staff. What they have done: Nick Christikos, Courtney Conley, as well as Rick LaFollette, Corey Tavares, Mike Weir, as well as Jared Hahn and Max Taylor. Our congratulations to that coaching staff. Really have kept the uh, student athletes, I think, grounded very nicely. And uh, we also have to say thank you to the administration for keep wanting. Dr. Chris Sellins, of course, the superintendent of schools. Rebecca Bainey, the principal here at Kewanee High School. Cody Butler, the dean of students. And Coach Tim Atwell, he, of course, is the athletic director here and has done a, a marvelous job. Uh, we mentioned uh, Brady Clark. And he set the singles, the uh, scoring record for Kewanee High School. Uh, just a tremendous job, 216 points he has scored. Uh, six receiving touchdowns, 13 rushing touchdowns, two rushing extra points and two interceptions to go all the way to the house as they say uh, six field goals we got to witness two of those field goals that have come right to my mind and I know they come to your mind too Jeremy why don't you go ahead and mention those well the first one was a game winner at Mendota last year on the road it was an entertaining uh, comeback victory for the Boilers last year and he booted that field goal to end the game and uh, was that an overtime or was that yeah I believe it was an overtime so uh, and then, of course, the one, uh, the playoff game, playoff, the last playoff victory for the Boilermakers. 
taking on the Plano Reapers two years ago here at KHS Stadium. He moved to the 40 yarder to go ahead and to seal the victory in their last playoff win. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we we don't doesn't come down to a field goal, but I have a feeling this is going to be a, a fairly close game. So every point, every play. Every turnover especially will be important. And, you know, mentioning that, Keone's done an excellent job this year taking care of the ball, and their defense has done a, a really good job of turning the other team over. So watch for uh, any, any turnovers could really uh, spin this game around uh, in one direction or the other in favor of that team. Yeah, and we also mentioned that uh, not only does he have that, that type of a record, but in a single season he's at 112. And James Hart from 1978 scored 119 points. Uh, so he's in second place at that situation. Also, you, you got to look at a lot of things, too. The fact that you have Blake Johnston. What do you call him? Sack, ma Sack man. There you I go. I saw Coach Taylor uh, called him an animal in one of the interviews. <laughs> so that, that's very fitting as well. Uh, and, and in a positive way, of course. But uh, career and season records, he's got 11 sacks already this year. I mean, and not only that, he leads the team in tackles. He's got 38 tackles. He has just been phenomenal. And th this is just two of the 22 players. Of course, a lot of, ki uh, of the student athletes play both offense and defense, but also Alex Duarte. He has 758 yards and 10 touchdowns this year, Jeremy. What a, what a what play he has had, not only offensively, but defensively also. Oh, yeah, for sure. He's definitely one of the, the keys to the game. He's... He's a beast in the middle on defense and then carrying the ball. So 758 yards, uh, not, a, not a ton of carries either to get to that point because Keely spreads the ball around really well on the ground. And he's, he's made the most of his opportunities, especially as uh, in the last probably three or four games, he's really kind of ramped it up and been breaking off big chunks of yardage on those runs up the middle. And we're going to be listening to the band at halftime. They're going to be on the field. What's so nice about this field, folks? And again, this did not cost the school district anything per se. What they did was they used grants to pay for this field. And because they were able to do that, uh, the, the student athletes are going to be able to be seen. And it's not a mud bath like you have a lot of times. It, it, it's really nice to see. Jeremy. For sure, when you break it down, uh, the cost of maintaining, you know, a grass field throughout the year, and then all the things that you can't do, you know, you can't have those lower levels, junior high, and elementary school all get to play here on the big field, and that's fun and important for them, and you couldn't do that a lot of times if you did have the grass, because you got to save it for the, the Friday nights for the big boys to play on, but it's great that everybody gets to use it, soccer uses it as well, and you can uh, just adds a lot of things. It's been a great addition, and it's fun to look at. It's, uh, really pops on the uh, on the YouTube as well. One more thing, too. I want to mention that the uh, volleyball team did very well. They ended up uh, winning the first game over at IVC, and then they were defeated by uh, Chillicothe IVC the next uh, night, uh, unfortunately. But a good season for the uh, the, the Boilermakers, the, the volleyball Boilermakers. A real good season for all of the, of the fall sports uh, with cross country, uh, just a really nice job. Tennis, they did very well. A lot of, of kids went out for tennis. And just a marvelous thing, how many of them went out. And, and that's, it, it, it gets involved with the flavor of high school. It isn't just, yeah, you want it, the teams, not teams, the, the, the student athletes to do well in school. Yes, that's the number one thing. But it gives a lot of credence to people saying, hey, I got to do this in high school. For sure, the extracurriculars really add a lot to it. the experience of the school. Of course, you're here to learn first, but you're also here to learn how to uh, how to compete and how to enjoy uh, being on a team and all the all that that offers to the students. So it's been a, a real testament to uh, to Coach Atwell, uh, the uh, and all the administrators, and especially the coaches and uh, all the different sports. They all do a great job, and uh, things are definitely looking up here at KHS. And, and we can talk about volleyball, cross country, uh, golf, of course, uh, soccer, and girls tennis. Those are the fall sports, and it leads into the winter sports, which we're hoping that doesn't happen for a number of weeks. We'd like to see Kiwani 
Uh, go all the way. We'll see what happens. All the focus right now is on the football field for sure. Everybody wants that to continue. Uh, all the 256 teams in the state that got uh, the privilege of playing in this play first playoff week all want it to continue. And hopefully that will happen for the Boilermakers tonight. He went to come to the record of eight and one on the season. They played Aurora Central Catholic last week and defeated them 50 to nothing. And I'd like to make mention that it was 50 to nothing at halftime. Jeremy, you, you saw that game last week, uh, and a lot of people were here. A lot of people were watching it. What was your take on that game last week? It was actually it worked out really well the way the schedule worked out because he had uh, the real tough game against Newman, beating them for the second year in a row. Uh, here on the home field was was a, a tough game. Boilers played great, uh, best game seen to play to date in this season. So they do keep on improving. And then last week to have uh, you know Aurora Central Catholic was just overmatched coming into that game. So Kiwani got to uh, rest a lot of guys. No one no one got injured, and it was a nice little tune up, a fun time. Honor you know record set set. We got to sit back and kind of enjoy that and take in what the team's done. Now it's time to get back to work in the second season and see how far you can go in this. By the way, the receiving touchdowns this year, just a real good job by the entire Kiwani team. Uh, ben Taylor had five touchdown receptions. Colson Wellgott had four touchdown receptions. Devontae Jordan had three, and Brady Schultz had three also. It, so they spread them out around nicely, and uh, uh, there are other athletes that also got those, but let's just suffice to say, it was a real good season for everybody here at Kiwani, and our congratulations for that. Now, let's go ahead and talk about this team they're going to be facing. Oh, one more thing. Four shutouts this year for Kiwani. They had four shutouts. That is tremendous, and I, I believe they set the record for the most points uh, scored average per game and gave up the least. It was just a tremendous season for the Boilermakers, regular season. Now they want to, of course, build on it here coming up, but uh, they're paying, uh, playing a team called Peoria Notre Dame. They are playing a team that is in a tremendous conference. They're 5-4. and four. Kiwani is 8-1. and one. Thank goodness Kiwani is going to be playing here at home because if you might want to mention about the poor Rockbridge Rockets. They were also 8-1, and one, and they have to go to where? Uh, Westville, Casey Westville, and it, uh, it's one mile closer from Casey Westville to Cincinnati, Ohio, than it is to Rockridge's school. So, wow. yeah, you 8-1, and, and you have to go on the road for you know, 300 miles, whatever that is. That's, that's really rough, but uh, the Rockets, after their uh, uh, season opening loss to Newman, uh, reeled off eight straight wins, including a win over Morrison, who uh, who was the one team to take down Princeton. So the Rockets are uh, yeah, they're plenty strong. They got a big long road trip right here, but it wouldn't surprise me to see them win that that game on the road and be moving on to the second round. Yeah, they've got a very good team. Notre Dame plays in the uh, in the Big 12, which is actually not 12 teams. It's actually got 11 teams in it, but they have played very good football. Uh, they played a lot of teams tough. Again, they ended up five and four in the season, uh, but they did lose their last three games to Champaign Centennial, Normal Community, and uh, of course to uh, Peoria High. And when you look at that, I'm guessing here, if you look at all of the teams that they play, it's got to average about uh, what uh, 1,200 to 1,300 kids. Uh, probably, probably over that. Actually, Notre Dame is at 563. I believe their enrollment was. Uh, Manuals uh, enrollment was right about 530, something like that. But other than that, every school was well over 1,000. Normal communities over 2,000. And so definitely, they faced some some bigger schools for sure. They're not going to be intimidated coming in here playing Kiwani, but Kiwani's going to have to go to work and try to change that mindset here in the first half. The quad captains are going to go to the center of the field for Kiwani, and they will uh, be facing a, a coin toss. Hopefully they can get it. Cruz Paredes uh, right to left. Cruz Paredes uh, as well as Jackson Hawkins and also Corbin Powers and Blake Johnston. And uh, so now they're going to go out there and meet here at the, at, at the midfield at the big K. Beautiful field here, folks. You would not believe how beautiful this is. If you've not been out here, uh, please come out here. Uh, by the way, you are listening on WKI 1450 AM and 100.1 FM, as well as so we are also on Kiwani High School Sports and Special Events. Hopefully you're enjoying this broadcast, and we're going to be trying to bring you 
who wins the coin toss here. Jeremy, one more time. It, it, this leads credence to what is important, and that is the fact the wind is coming out of the, go ahead. Northwest, and I'd say 20, 25 miles an hour. So it's a stiff wind tonight. Definitely gonna have an effect on kicks and passing. So that's not gonna have as big effect on Richwoods as they keep the ball on the ground a whole lot. They definitely do, their quarterback has a really good arm and he, he does pop one to the air, he tries to catch you off guard. But, uh, you know, he's gonna have to probably run the ball as well tonight. That's gonna be very important because this wind is gonna have an effect on uh, anything up in the jet stream. What is it ever, it makes a big difference. And let's see what we're gonna do here. Kiwani won the coin toss, it looks like to me. No, oh, maybe not. Ah, uh, let's see what is going to happen here. This is going to be a wing tee offense. Kiwana is going to face the majority of the time. They had two tight ends, and a wing tee means just that what Geneseo uh, has faced all year. Kiwani will be kicking off, and they'll be defending the north goal, and uh, Notre Dame out of Peoria will be defending the south goal. And I, I have their head coach out of <laughs> IHSA. They said his name is Pat Armstrong, and, and we look at the uh, program here, uh, Jeremy, and it says that his name is different. And, um, I don't. Uh, I don't know. Let me see here. Here it is. Jason Drangwitz. Does that sound right? It says Sounds Pat Armstrong in, 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 on the IHSA website. So anyway, we'll just go ahead and we'll we'll just say coach of yep. Notre Dame. Notre Dame's Irish. coach has done a good yep. job this year. Getting to five and four, they did win. Uh, they did lose their last three of the season, but that was really stiff competition, like you said. So at one time they were five and one, and uh, things were looking up, but uh, I'm sure they knew they had a few tough ones hanging out there in the schedule. But it uh, looks like the band getting ready to perform out there on the field. And I think they are. What a fun night, Russ. Excitement in the air for sure. Oh, yeah. Boy, the pork chop sandwiches were sure good once again. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the grilling crew, we sure appreciate all their hard work. But Notre Dame... The wing tee offense, they do run it very well. Uh, let me just mention this. They have a, a center who is going to be going to Northern Iowa. This was announced this week. He has accepted their offer. So that's a, a D1 school, and that it means a lot. But they do have, they're going to be starting on offense. Their quarterback is a six foot, 185-pound uh, senior. Liam O'Neill is his name, and he's a pretty good uh, a pretty good quarterback, obviously. But the wing tee is, uh, Jeremy, uh, you and I have seen it a number of times. But what happens is you get two guys in the backfield, and the third one is just off a little bit, off of the the, uh, the backfield. And not a full house backfield, as maybe you folks have heard me say before. A full house backfield would be with a Vera offense. You know, that's where you have your two running backs, and you got the fullback right up front, and the quarterback takes the ball. He fakes into the to the first gentleman. If he sees that he has an opening, he will take it up the field. Otherwise, it'll be... First man, fullback, tailback, second man. And then the pitch to the outside if he decides there's nothing there. Or he can the quarterback can take it himself. There's four options, and you're always wanting to block that straight ahead and get some type of an angle on the person that you block. That's that's the full house backfield. The the wing tee is not that way, but one thing they've got, they've got some size in the middle of that line. So Kiwani's going to have to really do a good job and stop the, uh, the uh, reverses. They're going to have to to stay home. And that's not easy to do. No, not for, uh, for sure. It's going to be tough. It reminds me a lot. We watched Rochelle play all those years here, and their offense looks a lot like that. It's going to be key to identify the ball carrier because there's a lot of fakes. They, they run it really well and crisp and hard to tell who has the ball. So... Everyone has to know their assignment and uh, stick home to that and not get fooled by some of these fakes. Again, O'Neill is their quarterback. The fullback is Lawson Alwan, a 5'11", 190-pound junior. Uh, on the wing is Benjamin Mullins. He's a 6'2", 205-pound junior. And the tailback is Jack Hanley, a 5'10", 180-pound junior. The center is Michael McLaughlin, a 6'3", 295-pound senior. The left guard is uh, Matthew Baker, a 5'11", 195-pound senior. The right guard, Tommy Meyer, a 5'11", 245-pound senior. Left tackle, Patrick McFarland, and he is a 6'2", 220-pound uh, senior. Uh, the right tackle is Brady Mullins, a 6'1", 250-pound sophomore. The right tight end is Jacob Ribes, and he is a 6'1", 180-pound senior. 
And uh, Joaquin Heft is the left tight end. He is a six foot four inch, 180 pound senior. A lot of, of, of quality players there, but I like Kiwani's depth defensively as well as offensively, especially the way that they have played this year. For sure, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of beef on that line for sure for Notre Dame. It's going to be tough to move them around, but Kiwani should be up to the challenge as they their offensive line has really grown as a unit this year. And they've been really opening up a lot, a lot, a lot of holes, giving Brady a lot of time back there in the pocket to throw. And it's, they've really come together and become one of the, the real strengths of this team. Also, we want to give you the defense for Kiwani because that's the way it's going to start out here. And the defensive ends, Blake Johnson, a six foot one inch, 205 pound senior, and uh, Jackson Hawkins, a six foot 220 pound uh, senior. The defensive tackles, Dan Boswell, a six foot 305 pound senior, and Corbett Powers, a six foot two inch, 260 pound uh, senior. The linebackers, and these, this is one of the biggest strengths of Kiwani this year. Alex Duarte, the man in the middle, he is a six foot one inch, 220 pound junior. Chris Paredes will be one of the outside linebackers, a five foot eight inch, 100. An 80-pound uh, senior, as well as Draven Peterson, a five-foot-seven inch, 190-pound senior. The safeties: Devontae Jordan, a six-foot-two inch, 180-pound junior. The hitter, he hits hard, folks. Fun to watch. Landon Mason, a five-foot-seven inch, 160-pound uh, is also a senior. Landon Mason. The cornerbacks: Trey Amos, a five-six, 140-pound senior, and Brady Clark, a six-foot-three inch, 215-pound senior are the corners. So we're looking forward to seeing uh, this. these two teams collide. And this is where you, you, know, you see, boom, they, they're going to collide. Should be a, a real fun game tonight. Kiwani's got to take care of the line of scrimmage, huh? Uh, for sure. You know, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a real test. It's going to be obvious here at the beginning of the game. If Kiwani has to start creeping their defensive backfield up to stop that run, that's really going to open up that, uh, that pass over the top for the Irish. So if Kiwani can go ahead and play it straight up like uh, like they want to and not have to really cheat their defensive backs up to stop the run That'll uh, that'll be a good indicator that they are winning the uh, the battle up front by the way I want to give you the uh, the chain gang out there in this cold weather They're all standing up there doing a good job. Of course. We appreciate them Randy Cernovich Tim Boswell Robert Willie and Richie Swanson and of course uh, Jerry Thompson over there on the flag on the southeast portion of the field and he is at VFW 8078, we sure appreciate him also what he does. Kiwani is going to be in their home black uniforms, black helmets, uh, and also the black pants, and the orange num numerals as well as the orange K on one side of the black helmet. Uh, I've noticed that uh, Notre Dame has that, that kind of a, a green color helmet. It really, it's like the New York Jets helmet. It is, yeah, yeah. and it kind of it's got a little sparkle and shine to it, a lot like the Irish up in South Bend, so it's it's a pretty looking, pretty looking uniform that they have as well. And we're looking forward again to seeing what happens. And they were have to wear the white jerseys, if I remember correctly, and the white pants with the green numerals. So it should be, uh, uh, again, it, you should be able to see it if you're watching us. But if you're listening, we just told you what they're going to be wearing. Okay, anyway, let, let's give you again our uh, our uh, uh, sponsors for this. We sure appreciate them. People's National Bank as well as Ace Hardware Distribution Center, Union Federal Savings Loan Association, and the State Bank of Toulon. So glad that, that they are sponsoring us. We sure appreciate them. And uh, again, uh, this should be a heck of a game. By the way, all the stats that I've been giving out, Jerry Salisbury, thank you to Mr. Stats, Jerry Salisbury, compiled by he and, uh, um, uh, and uh, <laughs> names are escaping me, I'm sorry, folks. But uh, Mick, uh, Mickey, Mick Shinkevich. Mick, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mick Shinkevich, uh, for a lot of years, did that. Yep. Went, Bob Westlin, who has hit, really been blessed to keep uh, really accurate records over the year. And years. it's been nice. Excuse me, Jeremy. Go ahead. That's all I was going to say. Okay. Well, we're looking forward to seeing uh, the Kiwani. They're going to have to do something to stop the Kiwani offense. And they've got some big guys. And I, I think the whole thing, the whole premise of this game is going to be because they need to go ahead and come through the, uh, defensively for them to get to the quarterback or to, and to stop Brady Clark. And they're going to also have to, to have to stop Duarte, and that's two huge orders. Plus, you also have Chris Paredes who comes in. You have uh, uh, 
you have a couple other guys that come in, which makes a difference for Kiwani. Uh, ben Taylor, you have uh, Devontae Jordan, Corson Walgott, uh, Brady Schultz, uh, you also have Trey Amos. So you have uh, a, a lot of skill position players who are performing at a very high, high level. Devin Peterson comes in offensively too. He runs the ball pretty well. So we're seeing also, uh, we're seeing a lot of other kids that come in to your, here too and play well. They're going to have to stop Kiwani somehow, some way. That's going to be tough to do. That is, uh, has been a tough thing all year. The only team to be fairly successful in that was the Princeton Tigers, the one loss of the year to uh, our arch nemesis, the Tigers over there, who are entering in at number two in 3A, and they are looking for another long playoff run as well. We also have the AW Titans uh, playing tomorrow at 1 o'clock across town. I know that a lot of their players are over here watching this game tonight, and... Uh, <coughs> Probably a lot of them be over there tomorrow watching that game, including me. <laughs> you have, what do they call that? Have, you have some skin in the game? You, I do. You have yes. a daughter that uh, She'll be cheering over is there. cheering right there. There you go. Okay, now we're going to have the playing of our national anthem here. By the way, the PA announcer, Frank Toka, does a great job. We sure appreciate all that he does. Also, we see uh, Dave uh, Briner over there, uh, as well as Matt Clark. And let me see who else is over there. Uh, Nate Freestead, and they're all up here trying to make sure that things are going well and running the clock and doing all those kind of good things. A lot of people out here. 300 tickets were sold yesterday in the morning and afternoon combined near Kiwani High School, which was pretty nice. The playing of our national anthem here coming up. Dave Spetz also coming in too. I think that's about it. We're going to let you listen to Frank Toka. Here we're going to have the playing of our national anthem. And again, 807 at the VFW Post over there in the in, in the south end zone. William Lee is the gentleman who is going to be directing the band here. And again, the playing of our national anthem by the Kiwani High School Band under the direction of Alex Benick. Does a wonderful job, of course. They all do. And we do appreciate their work. And Kiwani will be kicking off in about 37 seconds. Ooh, couldn't get that window shut quick enough for us. That wind is, uh, <laughs> yes. luckily, it's not even blowing our, our direction into the window, but it's howling and it's swirling around out there. Chilly night, football weather for sure. And it's going to be a fun one. There's a buzz in the air as well as a lot of wind. Oh, boy. And 
with a lot of a lot of good pork chops smelling in the air too. Which mm -hmm. is yeah, neat. it's blown right from the pits, oh, right oh, over, oh. over the stands. So that's got to help yeah. sales some, I'm sure. Oh yes, it has to. Looking forward again to this game we have for ever since Kiwani made the uh, playoffs. We knew they were going to make it. We just didn't know who they were going to be playing. And this has just been a marvelous thing for the Boilermakers and also for the the city, uh, quite frankly, and as well as. Um, for and now we're seeing this. There's strobe lights here, folks. If you can't see them, it really is cool. And Kiwani comes on the field. Um, and I want to say again, thanks to uh, all the the people who are doing what they're doing up here. And again, I have to give the uh, the folks who are uh, the drum majors, William Lee, as well as Bethany Van Wasnov and Victoria Dennison. We sure appreciate them leading the band and. Uh, so here we go, and Kiwani will be kicking off, and of course that will be Brady Clark. He'll be kicking off from the north to the south, and we'll see what happens to begin with. Uh, Kiwani needs to, I think, kind of say something here, Jeremy. What do you think is going to what Kiwani needs to do here? It's going to be very important. First of all, you have to cover the the kick well. Um, we know they have some speed and. Uh, uh, you know, exciting players back there to field that, so you don't want to give them really good field position to start the game. You'll have the wind behind you on the kick here, so if you get a, get a little air under it, might even be touchback uh, touch territory tonight. But, uh, yeah, those first couple of plays, uh, when they come out and see how the lines play, see how the teams are matching up, will tell a lot. And then uh, it does also matter how the, the game progresses, of course. I mean, the first couple of plays, everyone's, you know, at uh, max you know, maximum level of, of hitting, but to, to sustain that throughout the entire game, Kiwani's done a really good job of taking over the games later on throughout this season, and uh, I can't wait to see what happens. Russ? Yep, the Irish, you've got three guys back there for Notre Dame, uh, and uh, let me give you their their names here real quickly. The one that comes right to my mind is Blake Maxwell. He's on the near side, or right in the middle, I should say. But there's three gentlemen back there. Jack and Hanley is on the uh, the near side. One of their starters, yep. And on the opposite, looks like is that 22 over there, Blake Maxwell, I think, on the far side. So just about to kick it off in the 4A first round playoff game. And you're going to wonder who's going to be, this team will be playing. It'll be the winner of the Harrisburg-Carterville game, which will be going on uh, tomorrow, I believe. Here comes the kick. And it's going to be a nice long one. It's going to be over the head. It, it's on the ground, and they do get it back. Uh, I thought maybe they might follow. But, and now they're going to go down the field. And making the play was uh, Brady Clark stopping him on the far side. Somebody lost uh, protection there, it looks like. Not ideal. Yeah, they, they the two receivers bumped into each other. The ball kind of landed down at about the two-yard line. But... One of the uh, receivers picked it up and found a lane down the sidelines for a pretty good return. It looks like he got it out just to, just beyond the 30-yard line of Peoria Notre Dame where they will take over first and 10. Okay, their quarterback again, Liam O'Neill, And again, the fullback, Lawson Alwan. Tailback, Jack Hanley. And the wingback is Benjamin Mullins. Okay, and they do line up in that uh, wing tee. Two tight ends, always. And they're going to run right at Kiwani. Under center is O'Neal. He's going to hand the ball off to the second man through. He's going to be hit, but he goes down. He's going to pick up about five yards. Let's say four yards. That's Hanley. And it looks like a gain of maybe four on four, that one, yep. Russ. Second down and six from the Notre Dame 34-yard line. Expect to see a lot of that. That was kind of off tackle. They will also hand it straight up the gut on a lot of them and then uh, also try to pop it outside as well. So probably a steady diet of that tonight. And a lot of uh, a lot of misdirection, I think, too. Under center's O'Neal. He's going to hand the ball off to the first, second man. No, first man through. He is going to be brought down. It looks like uh, on the tackle that time for Kiwani is Duarte. About four more on that carry. Did you see who carried that one? Uh, uh, I think it was the fullback. All one, one, right? Yep. So four yards and four yards so far brings up a third and a uh, long one, short two for the Irish. 10.45 left to go in the first quarter. It's the Boilermakers and the Irish. And Kiwani facing 
This is on. This is a reverse, and it's going to be a first down after the 45-yard line. On the tackle was Duarte for Kiwani. What's that? Number no, one, I'm sorry. Uh, Mullins on the carry for the Irish. Looks like he gained about five, uh, maybe, yeah, probably five yards on that. Yep. And that was actually landed Mason on the tackle that time. So first and ten from the 44-yard line of Notre Dame Irish. Not the Fighting Irish, they're just the Irish. Again, the, the consolidation between Bergen and Spalding, probably around 15, 20 years ago. Their head coach, by the way, used to play for Bergen. He was a sophomore on the team that beat Kiwani back in 1985, believe it or not. First and ten for the Irish. Man in motion is Mullins, and the ball's on the ground. Let's see if Kiwani can get it. Nope. Be second down. Looks like a missed snap between the center and quarterback on that one, so it's going to be a loss of uh, about a yard or two. Second and 12 for the Irish on this one. Would have been nice if Kiwani could have jumped on that ball. Oh, that would have been sweet. Mm -hmm. Still a, a wasted down for the Irish. So Kiwani will be facing the Irish there at their own 43-yard line. You mentioned was a loss of one, right? So 9.27 left to go in this first quarter. No score as of yet. And a nice crowd out here at Kiwani on a wet and rainy night. Not raining now, however. Under center is O'Neill. The quarterback, he takes it. He gives it to the second man through. And, oh, what a hit. Kiwani can't bring him down. He gets to get it the back to the original line of scrimmage, it looks like. Maybe a gain of two or three on the play. Yeah, they had some good penetration on that one. They hit him and almost took the handoff from the quarterback. Uh, but he was able to go forward for about two yards on that one. Hanley on the carry. So it'll be third down and ten from their own 45-yard line. Let's see if they don't get this. If they decide to punt, they'll be punting into the wind. And it's a strong wind, as Jeremy mentioned. You said 25 mile an hour, right, Jeremy? Ah, uh, that's my guesstimation. Man in motion is Mullins once again. Under center is O'Neill. He is going to th going to be throwing the football, rolling out to his left. He throws it out. That's going to be incomplete. It looked like it slipped out of his hand. Like, is that what you saw too? Yeah, he didn't get a didn't get a good pass on that. It was at the feet of the receiver, who was open. If he could have uh, raised that ball up a little bit for the receiver, but he was being pursued. I'm not sure if it was Blake Johnson or not, but I'm um, just that's a, always a good guess. But yeah. he did have some pursuit, so he was really sprinting out hard to this direction. He is a left-handed quarterback, so he was rolling the uh, the easiest way for him. But that brings up fourth and uh, fourth and almost ten. So probably going to see a punt here into this stiff wind. Now they're they're huddling up though. Could be going for it. It's uh, 14 seconds left to go before they have to punt. Before they have to have this ball sitting playoff. at the 45 yard line of Peoria Notre Dame. And O'Neill is in the shotgun formation here, and uh, Kiwani is going to be. We're going to call timeout here. Yes, they do. Who does Kiwani call timeout, or does Notre Dame call timeout here? I wonder. 818 left to go in this. First quarter, and the Boilermakers really doing well. So it's going to be fourth down and ten no matter what. Gutsy call right here if, uh, if they do continue to go for it here on fourth and ten in their own territory on the opening drive of the game. This could be a game turner right here. And by the way, uh, the clock's still running here. And uh, also, that, that was one timeout uh, used by Notre Dame. Thanks, Jeremy, for that information. Appreciate it. So uh, hopefully... Uh, Kiwani can get it stopped here. Uh, we still see O'Neill in the game. Trips to the left-hand side. When I say trips, I mean there's three people, receivers to the left-hand side split out for Notre Dame. And they've got one man on the right side. And he is over there. Let's see what happens here. O'Neill is in the shotgun formation. And uh, they're getting ready to start this process once again. Big uh, big play right here early on. Yeah, It really is because... You know, if they get a, if they are able to go ahead and, and uh, get a first down, they're still in the driver's seat and they keep it going. And if Kiwani stops them here, they get the ball in very. He might good also field just quick kick this as well. So yeah. you never know um, what's exactly going to happen. He could just uh, pull it back and kick it, but it's a big one. Let's see. They're getting everything sorted out out there and uh, just about ready to blow the whistle. It looks like. And. Well, you know, you see those guys out there, and and it's so much fun when you've got a, a, the front four that can really rush the passer, 
it's so much fun to see them have their ears back, and man, they're going after. And this is uh, fourth down, and they're going to go for it. Shotgun position, O'Neal looking. He's going to put the ball out there. It's going to be a string, Ooh. and it's going to be a stop over there by the Boilermakers. Blew up over there on that side. Does that Cruz Paredes, I believe? Paredes, oh, wow. Yeah, they had three split out to the near side. They went to a screen pass on the far side, but Paredes was stayed at home, put the uh, nice, beautiful open field tackle. Huge play right there. Boilermakers take over in their own territory at the 41-yard line. First and 10 Boilermakers. Loss of four in the play, too, which is great for Kiwani. Again, their quarterback, Brady Clark, a 6'3 and 215 pound senior. Running backs, Alex Duarte. He is a 220 pound junior. Just a minute, we're going to go to live action here. Under center will be Brady Clark for the Boilermakers. Women in the backfield, that is Duarte. And it's going to be a, a whole run by Clark. He's going to be brought down, but he's going to pick up a couple of yards, I think, on the play that time. And uh, also. Uh, let's give you the rest of the guys. Ben Taylor, one of the wide receivers, a five foot eight inch, 160 pound junior, and Cruz Paredes, a five foot eight inch, 180 pound senior. What a great job on that defensive play by Paredes, by the way. Colson Well got one of the wide receivers, a five foot nine inch, uh, 165 pound junior, and here we go, second down and eight, Jeremy. Yeah, it was a. Kewing started with the option play on that. Brady kept it, but wasn't much there. But he did get a gain of about two or three yards. So brings up second and seven Boilermakers. And ball quick pitch to Duarte to the left-hand side. He goes straight ahead. He's got some running room. He's going to be brought down, but he's going to have a nice gain, about another five or six yards. It's going to be first and ten for the Boilermakers. About a nine-yard gain on that, it looks like. So they're moving the chains. First down, Boilermakers. Good run by Duarte. Wow. Good hard run. He had some room out there and uh, went ahead and got some good positive yardage on that. Duarte out for Kiwani. By the way, Duarte also playing very, very well. He is a six foot two inch, hundred eighty pound junior for Kiwani. Well, got now pit is split out to the left hand side. On the right side, side the, the near side is going to be, I believe, that is Taylor. I formation now, and the ball is going to be given to the running back. That's Duarte. He pushes forward hard. He's going to get the ball down to the twenty five yard line. A short field for the Boilermakers. They started at the forty four yard line, I believe, forty one yard line. Forty one yard line, yeah. Of uh, the Irish. Another five-yard gain right there for Duarte just to blast up the middle. The offensive line's doing a good job of making some room right there. So they're they're moving them big boys from uh, Notre Dame up there and making some room, and Duarte's taking advantage. Second and a long five for the Boilermakers. 6.25 left to go in this first quarter. Kiwani and uh, Notre Dame from Peoria playing in this game. Outside is, I believe, Peterson is going to be in the slot, and well got split up to the wide side. And now with the ball is going to be Kiwani's Brady. Big run Brady for Brady Clark, Clark right there. He gets up the 15-yard line, and someone's hurt. Oh, no. Oh, my. Going to be an official's timeout. Let's see what happens here. 6.08 left to go in the first quarter, and uh, let's see what we got here. And it's going to be a first and 10 for the Boilermakers. The ball is down to the 15-yard line. And we're going to have... It's Brady down on the far sideline, unfortunately. So that's not good. No, it sure isn't. Well, let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and talk about this first drive they've had so far, uh, Jeremy. It's been a... And he, well, he pops right back up, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, he's a tough young man. Look at him. He's running off the field. But that he, is very encouraging, Russ. Oh, but, uh, yeah, I hope he's okay. I mean, I, you know. He doesn't go down uh -uh. hardly ever. So that was uh, definitely scary. But it's great to see him coming off under his own power, actually jogging off the field under his own power. So that is a big uh, a big play. Don't know what happened. It was way on the far sideline. But as soon as the tackle happened, we saw some of the Boiler players kind of waving the – the, uh, the trainer out there, but um, hopefully he uh, he's all right over there in the sidelines, and looks like we're going to have Colson coming out. Colson Wild got will be the quarterback. Yep. Uh, for this play, first and ten, Boilermakers at the 16-yard line. Red zone for the Boilermakers tonight, and uh, he's going to hand the ball off. It goes to uh, Duarte. He's going to be hit once, twice. He's going to lose a yard. He's going to be brought down back to the 16-yard line, and Brady Clark comes right back in. The young man is so tough. <laughs> I mean, that's a heck of a uh, hit on the far side. So it'll, they're going to say no, no loss, no gain, of course. 
Good. He, uh, they gave him forward progress there. They uh-huh. uh, tried to run a blast up the middle to Duarte. There was a couple defenders right there. So got back to the line of scrimmage. Going to bring up second and ten. Okay, the Boilermakers have got trips to the right-hand side now. One man split out to the left. Duarte in the backfield next to Brady Clark in the shotgun formation. He takes the ball. He rolls out to his right-hand side. He's looking. He throws the ball. It's going to be caught out there at the 10-yard line. To the 5. It's the first down. It's going to be close to the, the goal line. Draven Peterson, Peterson on the catch down to about the 2 or 3-yard line. Great little uh, run and catch right there by Brady Clark. Coming in, looking okay. First and ten. Yeah, Clark really rolled out nicely. And the defense, the offensive line really gave him good time that time. I like the, the way this play is made because they roll him out to the near side here and they let him go ahead and find somebody that's open and they do that every time. Okay, now split out the left-hand side is Duarte. On the right-hand side is going to be Taylor. With the ball is going to be Clark. He hands it off. It's going to go out for a touchdown! Duarte on the touchdown. Alex Duarte... Goes in for the touchdown, touchdown, Duarte, touchdown, Boilermakers, and Kiwani leads it 6 to nothing with 4.31 left to go in this first quarter. Wow, that was a nice drive. A short drive, though. Remember, that that's a, a big thing so far as we can tell, uh, Jeremy. Uh, Kiwani goes and, and comes down the field 44 yards. Nice drive to start the game, and Kiwani will be kicking off here shortly, but they'll have an opportunity to kick the extra point here first. Brady Clark. Braden Conley will be centering the ball into the hands of Ben Taylor, and Brady Clark will be attempting the extra point. Six to nothing, and here comes the center snap, and the kick is up, and it is good! Well, the makers now lead it seven to nothing here, and uh, uh, wow, that was a textbook drive. I understand it's a short field, but it's just like the, the schedule that Kiwani has. People say, oh, it was an easy schedule. You know, you can't do anything but play the schedule that you got. And they beat a couple of, uh, a few really good teams, teams that made the playoffs, like Newman Central Catholic. Okay, let, let, let's just do that. And, and Mammoth Roseville. And you, you can go right down the line, Jeremy. And right there, they take the 44 yards, they go down, they score. They didn't turn the ball over. They took care of the ball. It's fun to see. Oh, yeah, great start. You couldn't, couldn't ask for much more than that. Uh, great start. Great job by the defense to turn Notre Dame over. I'm guessing this, uh, this stiff wind had something to do with him going for that fourth down because he put the ball up in the air. He's probably not going to kick it too far, but uh, Kiwani took advantage of that and drove right down on, well, let's see, what do we have? Not that many plays. One, two, three, four, five plays. Uh, five plays for the touchdown. Wow. Six plays. Sorry, I forgot about the pass. And remember now, too, the fact that uh, Kiwani will be kicking with the wind of their back, and that will, of course, be Brady Clark out there. Let's see. Looks like Blake's actually Blake kicking. Johnson. Yeah, Thank so. you. Okay. Yeah, give Brady a little break over there. Blake kicks it well as well. And it's going to be – again, they, get, they miss it up again, and they finally get it at, right at the one-and-a-half-yard line, and they get outside again. And, and Kiwani's going to fr- finally put him down, but still not – it was a great return. Well, it's almost like they're they're letting that bounce on the ground to try to let the, the coverage team get down on him, and then he uses his speed to go to that far sideline. And both times they found a little bit of a lane, but uh, only got out to about the 24-yard line. So not, uh, you know, a, a touchback comes back to the 25. So actually better for the Boilers that yep. they didn't let that roll in and get the touchback. Might have been letting it, trying to let it roll into the end zone and then just getting the touchback, but it wasn't going to make it. So they had to pick it up, but... Pretty good return after that. It looks like a penalty. All right. Well, that bodes well for the Boilermakers. It's going to bury the Irish deep in their own territory. Looks like the ball is going to be on the three-yard line. I wonder if he might have touched a knee. I'm not sure what happened, but but something happened for him. There couldn't be a penalty to take him back that far. So uh -uh, that must have been he was down when he picked up the ball, and uh, they're buried in their – in their own end zone almost. O'Neal has the football, and he is going to give the ball to one of his backs. I think that was the fullback up the middle for a gain of maybe one or two. That would be Awan. And so Kiwani leading at 7 to nothing with 4.02 left to go in this first quarter. Again, the Peoria Irish out of, the, out of Notre Dame in Peoria, Illinois, playing a really tough conference. And so it'll be second down and nine. And they will have, O'Neill will have the football. He hands it. 
He's going to hand it off. And Kiwani, oh, and he breaks two tackles. He gets to the secondary. He's going to have a first down. And that'll be out to the 18-yard line. Yeah, one of those, uh, you can't tell where the ball's at on that handoff. And the guy came through around the edge. Number one ran the ball. Mullins on that. And on that pretty, uh, from about the 15 out to the, or from the about the five out to the 18. So about a 13-yard gain on that. And that wing is very deceptive. As you mentioned, they follow through on their fakes very well, and that's one of the reasons why they're so successful. 7 to nothing. Kiwani with the lead. First and 10 now for the Irish. O'Neal under center. He's going to hand the ball off, and he gives it to the same guy again, Mullen. He's going to turn it back. He stays at his feet, and now he's to the 40. He's going to be brought down at about the 48-yard line for Notre Dame. It's at the Irish 48. It'll be a gain of... Uh, 31. 31. Yep. Big game. Same play right there. And he just got behind the defense. They, uh, The Irish were really blocking well downfield. And he found a lane up the middle for 31 yards. Oh, first and 10 for the Irish. Again, that's something that, you know, when you play everybody up like that, there's not a lot behind them uh, to, to, to stop it. And the linebackers were covered at that time, too, unfortunately. O'Neill, the quarterback, once again. And here we go again. This is that same setup, that wing T. This time the wing Mullins is to the far side. He's going to be blocking. The ball is going to be hit. Oh, Duarte coming in and putting a hit along with Hawkins. I think that was, yeah, 24 all went on the carry on that. Nothing doing on that. No gain. Second down and 10 for the, Bo for the Irish. And the Boilermakers again stiffen up if they can get him stopped here. You think they would try that again? That that was a that was a tough play that last time for the Irish, and they turned the ball over at the 44-yard line. Let's see what happens here. They Let's tried hope we put them in pass. that position again. Yeah. Second and uh, second and ten here. Okay, Deuce backfield in the wing tee. Ball's given to the wi the wing, and he goes off, and he's going to be brought down, but not before he gets down inside the 30-yard line of Kiwani. So that's going to be. 24 yards maybe on the no. carry right there. Who yep, was and he's still carry? down. Um, it was the wing. It was uh, uh, Hanley. Oh, I think Hanley. it was Hanley, I think. I'm sorry, the tailback, excuse me. He's brought down at the 26-yard line. Might have got the wind knocked out of him. So from the, it looks like the 26. I could be wrong. But they had the ball at the 49 of, Ki of Kiwani, or of, uh, of uh, the Irish. And they brought it down there, so that's a, a nice gain for them. A couple of big runs up the middle, three of them so far, actually, for the Irish as they tend to the uh, the player that's down. Hopefully everything's all right with him. And talking with their coach uh, yesterday, we had a nice conversation. He, and he says, uh, I said to him, I said, I'm not going to wish you good luck, coach. He sa I said, but I do hope that nobody gets hurt. And he said, yeah, I agree with you on that. I hope nobody gets hurt. Uh, so... Uh, hopefully uh, everybody's okay. And now we see Hanley. He's running off the field, which is good. 155 left to go in the first quarter. Kiwani leads a 7 to nothing, but the Irish are driving for Notre Dame. They've found something they, they like, and they've been exploiting it just a little bit there, haven't they? Yeah, it's been pretty much the same play these three times. I think actually one might have been uh, two of them were the same, and then this last one was a little variation off that, but up the middle, and they're into Kiwani territory for the first time. Once again, it'll be first and ten, and they're going to hand the ball off. This is Mullins again in the wing. He's going to be brought down. Again, he has positive yardage, about four yards, I believe, on the play. I think was was it Johnston, I think? Brought him down, looks like it, on yeah. the far side. So gain actually of two. So I'm sure I'm glad I was wrong there. Yeah, it's good to be <laughs> wrong in that direction, Russ, yeah. for sure. <laughs> okay. Second and eight for the Irish at the Boilermaker 27-yard line. And at 112 left to go in the first quarter. Again, Kiwenen will have the uh, will be against the win starting in the second quarter. And uh, once again, under center is O'Neal, their quarterback. He's going to hand the ball off. And he is oh. going to be, oh, my goodness, what a hit that time by the Boilermakers. That was up the middle. Uh, all went on that one. I was l looking at the fake on that one. I yeah. thought they were coming outside with it, but the handoff side, not sure if that uh, – who got that tackle, uh, but good job keeping it out and who had the ball. That might have been 52 Ayers Simmons on that tackle right there. And they're getting a lot of of uh, young men in and out of that lineup, young, or athletes in and out of that uh, lineup in the 
front, which is nice to see. By doing so, it keeps your, your line fresh, which is good. So third down for the Irish. They are at the Kiwani 28-yard line. Under 20 seconds now left to go in this quarter. The ball is going to be given to their running back on the wing, and that's Mullins. He's going to be hit once, twice, but he's finally brought down, but he gets inside the 20-yard line to the red zone. It's going to be a gain of eight or nine. It's going to be a first down for them. Yep, that's going to move the chain, so first down for the Irish at the 19-yard line of the Boilermakers. And now coming in for Q1, as you mentioned, they're getting a lot of people in and out. That's Corbin Powers coming back in, and he will replace uh, Ganderia, and that'll be the end of the first quarter. Q1 leads a 7 to nothing, but the Irish are driving. They've got the ball at the 19-yard line of Q1. Uh, let's go ahead and give our uh, sponsors list once again, just real briefly. Uh, one or two of our people, we sure appreciate them. Of course, People's National Bank, as well as the State Bank of Toulon, Ace Hardware Distribution Center, and Union Federal Savings and Loan Association. We sure appreciate all the help, obviously. And we want to mention that become part of a winning team, visit acehardware.slash careers and search Princeton. Also, don't forget about Union Federal. Take charge today, open a checking account with Union Federal, and get some of the best fraud prevention available. Visit online, myunionfederal.com, Union Federal Savings and Loan Association, member FDI. Also, don't forget about People's National Bank, the bank for all the people. And also, don't forget about State Bank of Toulon with offices in Galva, Toulon, and Kiwani. And Kiwani back at it here. Let's see what they can do. Jeremy, what do you see here in this uh, second quarter? What, Kiwani is going to have the wind at their, their faces. Yeah, only one pass on that first drive when we had the wind at our back. So I, I expect to see a lot more of uh, the ground game when we do get the ball back. But let's hope we get the ball back with uh, zero points on the board still for Notre Dame as they've uh, really put something together here on the drive. Six first downs now in the game for Peoria, Peoria Notre Dame. Okay, Mullins is on the near side. He's the wing. Ball's given. He's kept. No, he's going to be brought down. Nice job that time by the Kiwani defense. Um, all on, on the carry. Uh, Cruz Paredes, uh, Draven Peterson, and Alex Duarte out there for Kiwani, I believe. Nothing doing on that play. Again, uh, they've had a tough time going up the middle to Alwan. Most of their success has been to Mullins uh, off tackle. By the way, uh, at halftime, we'll have some uh, short time to give some stats, and then when the band comes on the field, we're going to let you listen to how wonderful the Kiwani High School band is. They really do a nice job. And I know you're going to be really uh, have an opportunity to enjoy it. Ten seconds left on the play clock. Let's see how long it takes them to get this off. Down to five seconds now. Again, and they now they finally get somebody under center. They get it, and they Flag. get it. And it's going to be... Dead, yeah. Went zero on the yep. on the time clock, so that's going to be a five-yard penalty on the Irish. First penalty of the game, is that correct? That's correct, yes. So it's been a cleanly played game so far. They took a lot of time in the huddle right there and just couldn't get the snap off in time so that's going to bring up second and about four, uh, about second 14. Uh, O'Neal was over talking to the to his coach and or offensive coordinator he's over there right now again and again it's down to 20 now when he came back over it was 11 seconds so he's had a little more time this time 11 minutes left to go in this first half he went leading it by a score of seven to nothing. It's kind of an advantage for the defense though because if you know the clock's right there at one or two you can pretty much time the snap and get up in it. So time clock at three. And they're going to hand the ball off. No, pass. about to pass uh, is the quarterback, O'Neal. He's going to throw the ball out there. It's incomplete. Intended over there uh, to the uh, Anthony Syme, and he is one of the tight ends. Irish uh, offensive line did a good job protecting their quarterback there. He put it out there. The ball went off the hands of the receiver. So that will bring up third and 14 for the Irish at the Kiwani 24-yard line. Big play right here. I think it's safe to say it's two-down territory also. Uh, this time the wind is at their back, so yeah. if they are going to try a field goal, this is the direction you would want to try it. Okay, so it is going to be third down and 14 to go for the first down. They do split a gentleman out there. That's uh, Joaquin Heft. On the far side, I think it's a slot to the left-hand side, I should say. Now under center is, yeah, he's going to have the ball. He's going to go out. He's going to have some running room out there. Kiwani's not getting out there. And they finally do, and he gets by him. And O'Neal is going to be brought down, but he's going to be close to a first down, if not having it. Looks like 
going to yeah. be just short, it looks like. Fourth and one, maybe. So, good run. He did. Uh, O'Neal did have a lot of room out there. Jordan came up from uh, guarding his receiver and did uh, put a stop on him there to bring up a big fourth down right here. Fourth and one at the Q1 11-yard line. Okay, 10-11 left to go in this first half. Q1 leading it by a score of 7 to nothing, And O'Neal has got the play from his head coach. Okay, tight formation this time. You know they're going to run the football here. Can Kiwani get them stopped? Fourth down and one, big play here in the game. And the ball is going to be given to, to the... the sneak. Yeah, he yep. sneaked it and yep. he got it. O'Neal got a couple yards on that sneak. He just put his head down, went behind his big center. Kiwani says they've got the football. They said it's a fumble. Kiwani says they've got the football. Brady Clark's coming over here. He says, we have the football. Let's see what they say well, here. That We do have the football in our hands, so... That uh, looks like they're, uh, yep, they're nope. pointing towards Notre Dame, so they will keep the ball. But, uh, yeah, the q defender, I think that's Duarte, came up at the bottom of the pile. He had the ball, but the officials didn't see it that way, so it'll be first and goal for the Irish at the seven-yard line. Let's say they seven. That's fine. 9.42 left to go. Once again, the Irish looking to try to knock this score up. Their second drive of the game. The ball is going to be given to the wing back and he's going to get the ball into the end zone for the touchdown. So that goes in there. That's Mullins. Eight yard touchdown run with 9.30 left to go in this first half. Let's see if they're going to go for one or two here. O'Neal stays on the field and we'll see if they kick or if they're going to go ahead and go for two. And we saw this last few years, haven't we, Jeremy, where they have uh, the line all the way over to the left hand side and they come back over. Let's see what they do here. Yep, that's exactly what they're going to do. And they will attempt the extra point, the kick. Kicking for them. It's 24, so that's going to be Alwyn. And their quarterback is holding. And here's the kick. It's up, and it is good. It's a 7 to nothing. 7 to 7, I should say, is the score right now. And uh, a long drive. That was a 90 seven-yard drive by the Notre Dame Irish. Six first downs on that drive, and uh, a lot of it were, uh, a lot of them were runs from Mullen, who was up to 68 yards. I think he had 63 of them on that drive right there, so they've definitely identified something with, uh, with him coming around uh, off tackle, and he's really weaving his way. He kind of cuts it back inside, and he's been finding room there, so q will have to find an answer for that. But right now we're going to be on offense, heading into the wind, and we'll see if we can get some more points on the board. A kickoff return for the Boilermakers coming up. Again, Kiwani will be getting the football to start the second half. Uh, let's go ahead and give you the starting lineup. Kiwani had the football for a very short period of time offensively. Again, Brady Clark is the quarterback, six foot three inch, two hundred fifteen pound senior. Alex Duarte, the running back, he is a, a junior also. Cruz Paredes is a five foot eight inch, hundred eighty pound junior, and uh, Ben Taylor is the one of the wide receivers, a five eight, hundred sixty pound junior. Colson Well got another one of the re receivers is a five nine. Uh, 165 pound uh, junior. Brady Schultz is the tight end, a 5'10, 170 pound uh, junior. Dre Amos is the other wide receiver, and he is a 5'6 inch, 140 pound senior. They also will have come in there, Devontae Jordan. They'll rot rotate the kids in and out. Now, Braden Conley is the center, a 6'1 inch, 195 pound junior. The left guard, Jackson Hawkins, is a 6'220 pound senior. Left tackle, Dan Boswell, a 6'305 pound senior. And Corbin Power is a 6'2, 290 pound senior. And uh, the right tackle is Leo Gandaria, a six foot five inch, three hundred twenty pound junior. So, well, there was a couple of key plays on that drive. The Boilermakers almost had them stopped uh, two or three different times on third down and that drive, but the Irish were able to find a way. Uh, the biggest play, I would say, was O'Neill getting uh, on uh, third and fourteen, he gained thirteen yards, and that uh, they did convert that fourth down. And that really propelled them into the end zone. So ball keeps blowing off the tee right now. That's how strong this wind is. It's really a whipping right now. So they will be kicking with the wind. So the Kiwani receivers will be back deep to receive that. Back there deep, of course, is normally it's uh, uh, Amos and or Taylor. I can't see on the near side who that is. That's not the same number we normally see here on the near side. It's going to be into the, I'm guessing it'll be into the, end zone. 
because this is going to be a stiff wind, as you mentioned. And here is the kick. They were off sides, by the way. And it's going to be over the... Touchback yeah. for the Boilermakers right there. That was, uh, I believe that was number 86, it looked like, back there yeah. to receive that. Uh, Graydon Lewis. By the way, they were off sides. I was watching, and they were definitely off sides that time. Well, they missed that one. Uh, they did have to have a holder on that. Uh, because the wind blew it off the tee about three times. So the Boilermakers will take over at the 25-yard line, correct? Or is it the 20-yard? Still the 20-yard line in high school. So yep, the pros 20. have moved it up to 25. I think college as well. Yes, it is. But still the 20-yard line for high school. So Boilermakers take over first and 10. Split out to the near side will be Ben Taylor. And in the track and formation is Clark. He's looking to run. And he is going to run it. He's going to be knocked out of bounds. Or guided out of bounds. At about the 26-yard line. Again, it's six on the play. Also out there, by the way, is Brady Schultz. He was on the far side. So it'll be second down and, let's say, five. Coming in was Alejandro Duarte with the play. Seven to seven, 925 left to go in this first half. Slot to the both sides, and the ball is given to the running back. That's Duarte. He's going to be brought down. Right at the 30-yard line, real close to it. He's going to be third down. No, they're going to mark it at the 29-yard you know. line, so it's going to bring up a third and one right now for the Boilermakers. Big play right now. you got to keep the sticks moving, find a way to get this yard against a, a big Peoria Notre Dame defensive line. And my thoughts exactly. You need to keep it going. Uh, you got to keep it doing it. And uh, they can do it. They just have to, to go ahead and block up front. And here it comes, and he forward. Oh, nice play by Clark. He picks up three. First and ten for the Boilermakers. Like he's done all year, you say, hey, we need three. We need a yard, Brady. We need, well, sometimes you say we need eight yards, Brady, and he just goes out and gets it, finds a way. You kind of knew that sneak was coming right there. He's going to identify where the hole was, and he just got low and squirted through there, three yards. So it's going to be first and ten for the Boilermakers at the 32-yard line. So maybe two yards on that. Yep. So... The Boilermakers trips to the right-hand side this time. Split out to the near side is Duarte. And under center this time is Brady Clark. They're coming in. They're, they're bringing. They're, bl they're blitzing here. Ball's going to give him the running back, and he is brought down. But he is going to pick up a couple of yards. That is... Maybe one there for Duarte. Duarte, yeah. yeah. So it'll be second down and nine to go for the first down. See Blake Johnson's hair over here on the sidelines? No, Looks huh? like he's, uh, he's gone, uh, gone gold with the hair so far. So <laughs> the sack go. man got an interesting haircut over there. Plenty of time. Colson Well got split out to the right-hand side. And, uh, again, kind of an odd uh, defense. It's 3-3-5. Uh, three, three, They've got five defensive backs, three safeties, and two corners. The ball is going to be given. No, kept by Clark. He's going to. Turn the corner. That's speed, and he's going to go out of bounds at about the 45. It's your first down, obviously. He's going to pick up about about the 43-yard line. So that's so. a 11-yard gain. Nice play that time, and good decision making. Rather than just to pitch the ball, he has got some wheels. I mean, he has, he has a lot of uh, a speed, and he showed it right there. Yep, it surprises a lot of people, and I think it surprised the uh, that side of. The Irish line right there. Good blocking as well by that side by the Boilermakers to, to free him up and give him that chance to get the edge and get the first down. 7-16 left to go. Split out to the left-hand side is Taylor in the slot of Schultz. Dual slots again, and it's going to be given on the draw to Duarte. He gives a stiff arm. He's got some running room. He is going to stay on his feet. He's going to get to the 50-yard line. Wow, what a run by Duarte, huh? Yeah, that was, a, that was a delayed handoff to Duarte right there who had two or three Irish staring at him as soon as he took the ball, but he fought him off and then hit the Jets. We got over to the side and dove up to the 50-yard line. The officials are talking about something right here. Well, that was a heck of a run by Duarte. That was, that was a really, oh my. really tough run right there. Oh. Yeah, then, he, then he dove forward at the end, so that's a seven-yard gain on that play. Let's hope that stands. The officials are talking about this a little bit, trying to see what... 7.13 on the clock. 7.13. Right. 
Okay, the officials are saying to put clock, the clock issue back right at there, so that uh, that carry will stand. A nice seven-yard run for Alex Duarte to bring up second and three, that right was, at the 50-yard line. That's a great first down play. 26 yards now on seven carries for Duarte, and that's what they need. They need to make sure they they can see the Kiwani is not a one-dimensional team. They're at more than one, and they've got a lot of tools to work, a lot of of, of things that they can do very well. So far, they've been sticking with the bread and butter. It's been Brady and Duarte on all the carries. High formation for Kiwani, and Clark is going to hand the ball off. It goes to, to Cabretas. He's going to be close. He has the first down. About a five-yard gain for Cabretas up to the uh, – about a four-yard gain to the 47-yard line of Notre Dame. Nice play that time, and again, first down. Of course, the clock stops in high school – Football on a first down, and they'll start the clock up here momentarily. Um, clock will be moving here, and it is again. Uh, when I say F formation, folks, by the way, they're in the form of an eye. The two running backs are behind them. And when I say deuce form, deuce uh, formation for the for the team, it's they're side by side. And right now, there's only one in the backfield, so it's neither one. Uh, it's a lot to the left hand side. Or Trish, left hand side. Duarte has it. He is going to make people miss, and he's going to go forward. He's going to be brought down. Going to be just at the 45-yard line. It looks like a gain of a couple on the play. Not much out there for Duarte as he took the took the handoff based on a stretch play out there to the far sideline. He was able to squirt forward for a positive gain of two to bring up second and eight. One thing you'll notice uh, in that play, Notre Dame gave no indication on the trips to the left-hand side that time. They were looking to keep it straight up the middle. Let's see what they do here. They do have three guys out here this time. Trips to the left-hand side now in the shotgun formation is Clark. He's going to roll out to his left. There's a ball there. It's going to be caught over there by the Boilermakers and down the sideline goes Paredes again. He, nice play. Nice throw by Clark. The money uh, running down to the 31-yard line. That's a 14-yard gain, and Kiwani's got a first down. Nice identification on that as well, Russ. Offensive coordinator Hughes, you called that play. You said they, they don't have enough defenders over here against the trips, and they did not. And uh, Kiwani recognized that, and they hit Cruz Paredes over the middle there for, uh, looks like, that was from the 47, so about a 15-yard gain. And split out to the right-hand side, and trips to the right-hand side now for Kiwani. And now this time, rolling out to the right-hand side is... Clark, he throws the ball. It's going to be, oh, in and out of the hands of the receiver there for Kiwani, unfortunately. And so it'll be second down and 10. Clock stops. 528 left to go in the first half. Kiwani driving, though, with a football. They've got it down to the, again, the 32-yard line. So Boilermakers once again working well. Duarte out, and Colson well got in for Kiwani with a play. Quick moving game so far, but a lot of it's been on the ground, so that clock keeps running, and down to five minutes and 28 seconds left in the first half. This is only Kiwani's second possession of the game, and uh, Notre Dame's headed for two possessions also. Now in the shotgun formation is Clark looking. He runs up. He's going to be uh, in, to the to the 30. He's going to be brought down just inside the just outside the 25-yard line of Notre Dame. And it's going to be a gain of five on the play, I believe. Yeah, down to the 27. So that's a gain of five on the play. It'll be sec uh, third down and five. They had the incomplete pass to begin with and then the, the run there. It closed quickly. They have got somebody watching Clark all the time, don't they? Yeah, they're definitely spying. They kind of brought a little, uh, little blitz on that as well. And Brady identified that right away and uh, went to the side where the blitz was not coming from and was able to pick up five yards on that. Third down for Kiwani, and five to go. Ball's given to Paredes. He is going to put his head down, and he can't get anywhere. It'll be no gain on the play. It'll be fourth down for Kiwani. Important play right now. Looks like, yeah, they are going to mark that right about at the line of scrimmage. So that's going to bring up, yeah, fourth and five for the Boilermakers. Big play right here. Uh, field goal's not in the cards with this wind whipping right in your face. So. Uh -huh. They're going to go ahead and go for it. It's going to be an important play for sure at their own, or at the Peoria 27-yard line. Yep, and again, it's uh, four minutes and eight seconds left to go in this first half. Kiwani tied up with Notre Dame 7-7. Seven to seven. Now we're going to have a... Ooh, oh, they got Kiwani to jump. I thought they got the, got the Irish to jump, but unfortunately Kiwani did move, so that's going to make it fourth and 10 now from 
the 32-yard line of Notre Dame. And you sure don't want to try a field goal from here, obviously, like you mentioned, even five yards closer. If, it w if you try a field goal here, it's from the 40. That's a 52-yard field goal attempt or a 53-yard. So you don't want to try that. Fourth and ten. Probably going to have to go to the air right here and see what we can come up. Someone's going to have to step up and make a big play. The line's going to have to block and give Brady some time to find his receivers. He's got plenty of weapons. Yep. And uh, let's see if we can go find one for at least 10 yards. Dual slots again. Back to pass is Clark looking. And he is going to be... Throw the ball. It's going to be incomplete. I thought he, he might have had an opening there to run there right the last second. Uh, but uh, they had that uh, linebacker coming over spying, as you mentioned earlier. So uh, incomplete pass, turns the ball over on downs to the Notre Dame Irish. Fourth and five, he probably does run for that, Russ. Uh -huh. But fourth and ten, it was just a little too far to get. So he decided to try to hit one of his receivers. The pass was a little bit behind the receiver. And Notre Dame will take over on downs at, the, at their own 32-yard line. 3.33 left to go in the first half. Plenty of time for them. They've got two timeouts left. And the Boilermakers once again on defense. Let's see if they can get a stop here again. And uh, they're taking an enormous amount of time here. Now coming into the game is uh, a gentleman number nine, and that would be Bryant Blackford. He is a running back for them. Mullins is the wing on this near side. Ball is going to be given to the first man through, and it's going to be a gain of about four or five for all on the tackle that time. I think that... that stop was by Powers, if I'm not mistaken. It'll be second down and six, Jeremy. Owen had a little bit of a positive gain on that one to bring up second and six for Richwood, so q has got it. Defense really got to stiffen up right here and try to get the ball back before half. Quarterback O'Neal under center, and he is going to the ball given to, once again, that uh, wing back, and he is going to be brought down. He might have almost lost the ball there. He wanted to come up. Duarte came over and gave him a, a good hit uh, on the play. No, I'm sorry. Take that back. Blake. Blake Johnston came over there on the hit. First and ten, though. They've got the ball out to the 43-yard line. And a lot of success so far running with Mullins on that same play right there where he kind of gets it around the tackle area and then cuts back up the middle. He only had a hard time stopping that play. He's not a small kid either. He's six foot two oh five. First and 10 at their own 43-yard line. Mullins again. Ball's given to the running back this time. That's all one. He gets hit one strike. No, I'm sorry. Take that back. That is the guy that just came in, uh, number nine. And that would be uh, Blackford again. And he's going to be picking up a nice amount of yards for them, not for Kiwani. Gain of five. It'll be second and five. Yeah, good tackle. Brady, Brady Clark stopped him right there in his tracks got low on him and uh, prevented a further gain because he did have some room right there. So Rich Woods is finding some holes in that boiler defense. Two men in the backfield and the ball's going to be given. No, back to pass is O'Neal and now he's going to roll out. He's got some running room and he's going to run out of bounds at, after a gain of a couple at the 50-yard line. Uh, yeah, he actually went ahead and threw that ball. Oh, he did? I didn't see towards that. Towards the end, yep. He uh, kind of went sidearm on it, scooted it down, incomplete pass, so that's going to bring up third and six for the Irish, right about midfield, 48-yard line on their side of the field. So big play right here. Actually, that I know the clock stopped, but it still was a good thing for Kiwani because he, they don't get those extra two yards. He looked like he was going to gain some yards if he would have yeah, held on to that ball yeah. and ran it, but he uh, decided to go for the pass, didn't get it. Ball going to be given once again this time. Dowan, he's got some running room. He's going to be pushed out of bounds at about the 48-yard line. Let's see where they mark this. It's going to be right about the first down marker. Going to be real close. That was a nice run that time. going to be a little bit short. I'm sorry. I take that back. That was not one. That was number five, and that would be uh, Heft, H-O-E-F-T, Heft. So fourth down and one to go for the first down. Clock running with 122 left to go. Tough to stop this team. Uh, they got that big center right in the middle. I'd imagine that's where they're going to go with the ball, right up the middle. So it's probably less than a yard right now, fourth and one, right around midfield. And O'Neal 
Now we're going to have a timeout called by Kiwani. I like this timeout with 107 left to go in the first half. This is a big play here for Kiwani. Really big play. Well, minute seven left. You also have to be aware they they could take a shot right here. You know, if they uh, if if they get gutsy on the call, you could play action this, and you have to make sure no one sneaks downfield and gets behind you on this one. With only a minute seven left, they don't have uh, a lot of options. You know, they don't have a whole lot of plays left, and they are still at the 48-yard line of Kiwani. So, long way to go. Uh, I like that timeout as well. Talk it over. Make sure that they don't pop you downfield or get behind you. And we're also jump outsides too. I agree with you 100%. That, that's something you want to make sure you do. Uh, again, it, a minute seven left to go. I like that timeout call by Coach Taylor and his, and his coaching staff. If Kiwani can just go ahead and get him stopped here. This is a big play in the game once again. And coming back in the game for Kiwani, which is nice, uh, is uh, Gandaria. He's a big young man up there. Here we go. Fourth down and one. I'm going to see O'Neill again. And we're going to have it stop. We're going to say Kiwani jumped off sides. They, they kind of got up out of their stance, but no one went across the line. So, But they're going to get that call. It's going to be offsides. Kiwani first down for, almost said Richwoods, Notre Dame. Okay, the ball down to the 43-yard line of Kiwani with 104 left to go in the first half. They still have two timeouts left, the Notre Dame Irish do. They look like Richwood with the, with the green. So first and 10, and this time in the pistol formation is O'Neill. He's going to hand the ball off to the first running back, and he's going to be brought down. Nice play by the interior of the line for Kiwani. Good job by the Boilermakers. Popping up over there for the Boilers is, ba is Boswell, I believe. And it's going to be a timeout called now by Notre Dame. Yep, I think so. So one left seven seconds left in the first half. They've got the ball at the Kiwani 43-yard line. Good play by the defense right there. They tried to pop all one up the middle. Nothing doing. Stopped that. So that's going to bring up second and ten. And they have one timeout left now. Notre Dame does. Yeah, that smell of those pork chops. You know, I, I am actually full from having one. And I I just smell that. And you know what? I'm hungry for another pork chop. <laughs> they do smell good, <laughs> oh, for sure. Oh, my goodness. They do a great job here at uh, Kiwani. Uh, you know, uh, 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 Joe and his uh, his uh, crew do a wonderful job of, of uh, cooking those pork chops every single week. They taste so darn good. You know, it smell good here, too. A nice stop and keeping that seven on the board. Uh, I think Kiwani would like to go in tied right now, seven to seven, and uh, come back out and get the ball to start with. Kiwani now facing trips to the left-hand side by Notre Dame, and the quarterback, O'Neill, is going to roll out to his right, looking to pass it, it back. Now he's got it over there. He's going to have it complete. No, no. Uh, incomplete. Great job by the defense by the Boilermakers. Alejandro Duarte back there along with Brady Clark. Wow, what a hit they put on him. Vontae Jordan back there as well on that one. He had it in his hands. The receiver did, but the defender, it might have been Jordan that knocked that out. Jordan or Clark, I wow. think. And a great play right there to bring up third and 10. 51 seconds left for Richwoods. It wouldn't surprise me to see him go back to the ground here and see what they could do there just to run some clock as well because uh, if you bring up fourth down, if you pass again fourth down, q is going to have a little time left on the clock if they can stop him that second time but that was a big one right there that was uh that was looking like a 30 yard completion they were going to be down in the red zone and uh, in business but what a play by the q secondary that was Ru piper back there by the way had the ball in his hands and that was a nice hit a nice lick put on him and they're going to be split out the trips to the left hand side once again q defense the the line needs to get in there put some pressure on this quarterback o'neill he's getting way too much time two guys on johnson oh it's going to be over there it's going to be incomplete and uh, the boilermakers once again it's going to be boy johnson had two guys all over he they were all over him it looked like in johnson saying he was held i thought he was too but no flag there Fourth down now and 10 to go with 45.6 seconds left to go in this first half. Kiwani's tied up with the Notre Dame Irish 7-7. Seven to seven. Yeah, he threw that pass down towards the goal line. The receiver had stopped. There was 
uh, a little bit of contact between uh, the, the receiver and the defender, but I think it was kind of on both of them. The pass was probably uncatchable as well. So brings up fourth down, 45 seconds left in the game. Notre Dame still at the 44-yard line, 43-yard line of the Boilermakers. Fourth down, and with the football are the Notre Dame Irish. They have the ball at the Kiwani 43-yard line. They are a very good, very well-disciplined team, obviously. Back to the spread, so it looks like they're going to be passing this one again. Trips to the left-hand side. O'Neal back to pass, rolls out, and now he's going to go and, and uh, run the ball. He is going to be brought down well shy of the first down marker, and it looks like he might have thrown the ball over to one of his uh, uh, compadres. That was Joaquin Heft again, and it's going to be first and ten for the Boilermakers, and Jeremy... Kiwani still has two for two timeouts left to go here. Yeah, nice to turn that ball over on that. They did not. It looked like he was probably running that one all the way, but uh, I think that was Jordan out there on the on the outside. He really did a good job corralling him, swung him around. Ball squirted out. I'm not sure on purpose or if it was a forced fumble, but it was really no advancement. They might advance it for a yard, but Kiwani takes over at their own 40-yard line. First and 10 for the Boilermakers. Trips to the right-hand side, women to the left. And back to pass is Clark going to the short side of the field. He throws the ball out there. It's going to be... Is it caught? That was a good catch, oh, it looks like. Catch. Right oh, on, my! Right on the end, end, end line right there. Was Taylor, I believe, hauled that one in. That was a beauty. So gain of, uh, let's say, 14 yards on that. Wow! What a nice job that time and a good pass. And... The offensive line is giving Clark time to throw the ball, too, which is nice. So 30 seconds now left in the half. He went down to the 47-yard line of the Notre Dame Irish. Back to passes. Clark in the pocket, looking good still. He's going to run the ball out now. He's got some running room. He's going to go over to the 40, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds. He's tackled out of the bounds! That's a penalty! He was running towards the sideline here onto the Keone sideline. No flag came out. The, uh, the contact might have been initiated right at the, uh, the end line, but they did kind of drive him to the ground after that. A few words from the Keone bench, but uh, no flag on that. But it is going to be a gain of nine yards for the Boilermakers, so it's going to bring up second and one at the Irish 38-yard line. Sorry to get too animated there, folks. 20.4 seconds left to go in this first half. Keone driving. And it'll be second down and one for the first down. And it'll be a deuce backfield with a football. Is Clark looking to pass? He throws it out there. It's going to be... Oh, flag. Flag, oh, yep, there we yep. go. You're going to get the flag on that for sure. Jordan was going for the ball. The defender cut right in front of him, took his legs out. Big pass interference right there. Unfortunately, you don't get the ball where it happens. But it will be, what is that, a 15-yard, 10, 15-yard penalty. So it's going to be uh, a good positive play, but... Boy, if he doesn't cut in front of him right there, I think Jordan's going to haul that one in for the TD. So probably a good play by the uh, by the defender right there to uh, to trip him up. And I'm not sure, are they uh, – oh, no, they're walking it off. Yep, good. from the line <laughs> of scrimmage is where they do it. So it's a first and ten for the Boilermakers. They're going to have the ball, and it's going to – with 15.2 seconds left, Kiwani still has two timeouts left. 15 yards on that penalty. Okay, here we go. Well got back in the game with the – play. Plenty of time. Trips to the right-hand side for the Boilermakers. And uh, and here Clark in the shotgun formation. Empty backfield. Now he's going to go ahead and he is going to throw the ball off there. It's going to be incomplete. 10.3 seconds left to go. Wind is really blowing and howling up here, by the way, folks. Yeah, blowing some stuff around up, uh -huh. on, the, uh, up on the roof, and it's also blowing the ball around there, too. Kiwani's going into that wind right now, and it's going to be tough to throw a big, long, you know, 25-yard pass in the air, but maybe two plays left. If you find a quick hitter, maybe you get a 10-yard gain and get it up a little bit closer. It won't have to be such a, uh, such a deep heave, but we'll take whatever we can get right here. I don't know. I think I'd look, uh, I think I'd look to Jordan again. Now, with the football are the Boilermakers. They have one man in the backfield. Dual slots. Back to pass is Brady Clark looking. He throws the ball in the end zone. It's going to be Five. another. Oh. 
He never turned around, so uh, Wellgott tried to come back for the ball, but he couldn't get through the defender, who was not looking at the football. He, he can't work another flag on that one, though, so that brings up third down, yeah. but more importantly, 3.4 seconds left, so one more try at the end zone here. You can't, yeah, normally you'd be thinking about a field goal, but I don't think you do that as this win, no. so no. you got one more 23-yard heave at the end zone. At the end of the first half, tie game 7-7. What does that tell you, the last two plays that Kiwani has had? That, I mean, we're seeing them, they are not looking at the football, they're looking at the receiver. Yep, yep, so yeah, you have to take advantage of that, find a way. Got one play here, uh, let's see who they decide to target. Clark looking, now he's going to run out there, it's going to be, throw the ball out there, let's see if he can get it in the end zone, it's going to be... It looked like it was incomplete. Incomplete, out of bounds over there on the sideline. That was good uh, good coverage by the Irish on that. So uh, the game, good game, Russ. That's well, what we thought it was going to be. Tough, 7-7 seven to seven at the end of the half. Kiwani scored on their first possession. Notre Dame scored on their second possession. And here we sit as both teams. It was a quick half. A lot of, a lot of ground action tonight. And, um, yeah, exciting. And Kiwani has done a really good job this year of making adjustments coming out of the half, and they're going to have to do that in this game as they are find themselves tied with the Peoria Notre Dame Irish. Waiting for the band to come out on the field. But one thing, again, I have to mention, we are seeing Kiwani, the receivers, are making some excellent cuts. So what we're going to do right now, because the band is on the is coming on the field here, boy, they look good again. Ended up in fourth place last weekend, I believe it was last weekend, at Western Illinois University. A great job by them, that's for sure. And we're going to go ahead and uh, let you listen to the Kiwani Boilermaker Band. Here they are.
We hope you enjoyed the halftime festivities of Kiwani High School's marching band. And Great hope, job again, oh, as always. Yeah. It's fun to listen to them. Alex bennett has got them playing great, and they're fun to watch, and they definitely add tons to the experience of a football Friday night, especially a playoff football Friday night. Yeah, that's right, and we're looking forward to a second half. Kiwani will get the football to start the second half, and they will be defending, I would assume anyway, the uh, uh, the South goal, would you think? What do you think? Well, you know, there's two schools of thought on that. You, you know, Maybe you want that in the fourth quarter. You want the wind behind you. But either way, it's very important for the Boilermakers to get a good start and to try to come down and uh, wrangle this lead back as uh, Notre Dame, Kiwani took their first possession. Uh, they started with a short field because Notre Dame went for it on fourth and ten on their own side of the field. Kiwani did a great job stopping the screen pass on that. They took over six plays later, scored a touchdown. That was Duarte on a blast, a two-yard blast to give the Boilermakers a 7 nothing lead. That was early in the first quarter. Actually, I have the time. It was 4.31 left in the first quarter. And then it was uh, when he kicked the ball back to Notre Dame, who had a really nice drive uh, on that. They 9.30 left in the second quarter. Mullen scored on an 8-yard run. The kick was good, so that knotted us up. And that was the last of the scoring, as both teams had a possession towards the end of the second quarter, but neither one could get any points on the board. So there's where we sit right now at 7-7. Seven seven. Going over the stats real quick, on the ground, Peoria Notre Dame Irish had 139 yards, uh, one completion through the air, and that, like I said, that was actually a negative play. So 135 yards total offense for Notre Dame. Benjamin Mullins had seven carries for 75. He really sparked him there. He really started breaking off some big chunks off tackle and then cutting it back up the middle. Lawson Alwyn had seven carries for 10 yards. Jack Hanley had another big one on that scoring drive. Three carries for 30 yards. Liam O'Neill, the quarterback, had four carries for 15. And then number nine, Blackford, had one for five. Number five, Hart, had one for four. Uh, one, uh, so 135 total yards offense for Notre Dame. 123 yards offense for the Boilermakers. Alex Duarte had eight carries for 28 yards. Brady Clark, seven carries, 47 yards. Crew spread is two for four. Brady Clark had 43 yards on three complete passes. He threw eight, so he was three out of eight through the air for 43 yards. Ben Taylor had a really nice catch on the uh, on an out-of-bound line where he just kept his feet in on that final drive, trying to get some points before the end of the half, 14 yards on that. And uh, the other – I didn't write down who caught the other ones, Russ. Mm, sorry about that, but I'm trying to think back uh, on who did catch the other passes, but um, – I know there was one for 14 oh, um, to start the game. Yeah, the the first catch was by Paredes. Paredes did have that 14-yard yep. catch. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So, uh, yeah, 80 yards on the ground for the Boilermakers, 43 for, through the air, so 123 total yards for the Boilermakers. So a really close first half yardage-wise, score-wise. Uh, as far as you can look and see out in the field, the teams look pretty similar as well. I think the one difference that Kiwani can count on is Brady Clark. I haven't seen any player on the field that can do the dynamic things he can. Notre Dame's done a really good job of having a spy on him at all times, and he hasn't been able to really get loose for a whole lot. But he finds ways of making things happen, and I think that's probably going to happen in the second half. And let's hope so. Go ahead and move on to the second round of the playoffs. That would be nice to do. We've got a half a football to play here, and again, Kiwani will receive the second half kickoff. We're looking forward to seeing how the Boilermakers do uh, in, in so far as the rest of the half. You had mentioned earlier also you thought that maybe there was a little bit of interference by the um, by the Notre Dame team. Uh, and one more thing I want to mention before I go into that. Do you notice the, the, the scoring sheet I get you? Yes. Okay. Normally... I give you a couple of sheets, right? Because mm -hmm. there's three touchdowns or scores on each sheet. So I I normally give you two, maybe three sheets for between six and nine touchdowns. I got four this time because of all the scoring both teams have been doing. And uh, it's seven to seven here at, at, uh, at halftime. So uh, they're, both teams are going to have to score a lot to, to fill that, those things up. Well, let's hope most of the scores are by the Boilermakers as they'll get the ball first. It's, uh, both defenses have really played well. A lot, a lot of yards in between the lines. Uh, really, it was just one drive for each team in that first half. Each team had a, a nice drive. And then other than that, moved the ball back and forth a little bit. Unable to score, but looking for... Some big adjustments for the Boilermakers on that if they can learn. Uh, they're going to have to figure out a way to stop Mullins on that 
that uh, that carry, that play that he keeps doing where he cuts it back up the middle and go ahead and get the ball back. But let's, uh, it's always important the first couple plays of the first half, the who's going to win the battle up front and get on the board first. I, I, li I like what you said. I thought that that was very much uh, something that is very uh, – predominant in this game as well as the rest of the games this year. And that is a key one. His coaching staff makes some wonderful halftime adjustments. And by doing so, it gives their team a little bit better chance of winning the game because the other team is going to do well too with their halftime adjustments. But one thing key one is going to have to do is they need to put more pressure on the quarterback. They're able to get out in the, the cor not the cornerbacks, but the corner people who are supposed to be coming up and turning the plays in that's not happening, and that's something that Kiwani has to, to look and see what they're going to do there. Yeah, we'll see how much throwing, passing that Pure Notre, Pure Notre Dame does in the second half. They did uh, quite a bit on that last drive because they were up against it, uh, the clock, and they only had one timeout left. They had 50 yards to go. So they went to the air several times unsuccessfully on those as well. So I look for Kiwani to really find a mix. You could tell on that last drive when they did go to the air, the defensive backs for Peoria were kind of face guarding the receivers. They weren't getting their head back around at the ball. It led to one pass interference call. It could have been another one uh, or two on that, but Kiwani might look to exploit that here in the second half. Looking forward to seeing the Boilermakers get the football here to start the second half. Uh, with the ball coming down to them, like we're, we're going to see, and that they'll be uh, Notre Dame will kick the ball from their own 40 yard line in the north part of this field because we're in the north south field and the wind is still really really blowing pretty good unfortunately I, I wish it didn't hap have that happen but you can't do a lot about it it is what it is as they say in in in, in anything in life you're going to have to take your good with your bad let's take advantage of that wind while you've got the advantage of it and then in the second in the uh, fourth quarter you'll have the wind to your back and it should be nice to see for sure 24 minutes here to get a victory and move on to the second round for one of these two teams. It should be a hard fought game. It's really going to come down to really who can make some plays on this. And I look for the Boilermakers. They've had a lot of, they have a lot of weapons that they haven't really used yet. So I think they might spread it around and see what happens. Well, Kiwani, it looks like is going to be um, defending the North goal here in this third quarter. So Notre Dame will kick the ball off from their 40-yard line here. Into the wind. Yeah, very much so. And now we're seeing what, what's going on here. Their, their kicker is saying, oh, are we going to go that way? No, not yet. <laughs> That's all on again. And there's a penalty. What would this be for? There, there's... He wanted to come out of the locker room too. Thank you to Frank Toka, the PA gentleman. We appreciate that. 15-yard penalty, and this is going to help Notre Didn't Dame. Know there was such a rule. Yep. Seven to seven, the score here at halftime. Kiwani will get the ball to start the second half. Deep for the Boilermakers, I believe, is Peterson on the near side. I can't see who's on the far side though. Jeremy, you have to help me out there, huh? It could be Graydon Lewis again. That's who was out yep. on the first kickoff. And he does do a very nice job uh, catching the football. Again, the the ball is coming out of the – you mentioned the northwest. Is that right? Yep, one's okay. coming out of the northwest. And that could be Landon Mason over there. It could be number 16. Mm -hmm. He knows how to run the, the football too, obviously. Good hands people up there for Kiwani because this could be an onside kick. You never know what they're going to do. And instead, all one will be back – at his 44-yard uh, line, much shorter kick opportunity for him here. Let's see what he does. And we're underway here now in the second half. It's going to be an onside kick. It's going to go out of bounds, though. So Kiwani will get the ball. Nice field position for Kiwani. I wonder if that was planned to do that. Yeah, it looked like they were trying to a little, uh, little pooch kick over towards the sidelines and try to get to get uh, the ball to pick it up before Kiwani could get to it. It bounced out of bounds, and that should give Kiwani the ball at 35-yard line. 
So the bowling makers will have opportunity here to get the ball. Again, a shorter field. Let's see what they can do. They moved the ball well at the end of the of, of the first half. They just didn't have enough time. The time ran out on them. Otherwise, I think they would have scored a touchdown there. Sure. Let's see what they dial up on first down out of the out of the locker room. Okay, the Boilermakers again. There's another penalty on the Boilermakers. Oh uh, apparently, I'm not sure what this is. Let's see what they do. Uh, you're so right. It's illegal procedure. No, it's it's on. No, what? I think they just placed the ball at the 30-yard line uh, instead of yeah. the 35. Yeah. So no. See, I'm off. Penalty. I thought it was uh, well, what college or pros is 35. But anyways, first first down for the Boilermakers at their own 30-yard. Clark line. looking to pass, rolling out to his right-hand side. Now he's going to be throw the ball out there. It's going to be incomplete. Intended for Colson Wellgott over here at mid the field. No good. And uh, not a lot of. Uh, th they did make a halftime adjustment. We're seeing four players over there for Notre Dame after Brady Clark rolled out to his his right towards the near side of the field and uh, that means you wonder if maybe they're going to go ahead and have some openings there uh, Jeremy for the Kiwani's running ability well you have to hit them where they're not and right there they were ready for the pass on that first play as they had a lot of defensive backs out there with eyes on the quarterback ball is going to be kept by Clark and he's going to quick pitch now and Kiwani is going to be uh, tackled for a loss back to the 20 Looks like they're going to mark it about line. the 20, uh, 25 yard line. It'll be a loss of about six on the play it looks like. So it'll be third down and Kiwani is not going forward. They're going backwards unfortunately. And now coming in as well got with the play. And clock is running. 11-19 left to go. This game is tied 7-7. Seven to seven. Split out to the near side is Taylor. In the slot is Schultz. Slide on the other side also with the football is Clark looking to pass. Now he's going to go ahead and it's going to be a flag in the play. It's going to be thrown out there. It's going to be caught by Walgott at the 38-yard line. Not a first down, but uh, there's a flag. It's going to come back, I do believe, unless they want Kiwani to punt. Let's see what they do here. And... Uh, this was talking. It's a hold against Kiwani. Yep, there we go. Unfortunately. And I wonder if they're just going to decline it, Jeremy. Well, it was pretty close to a first down. If they did call that a catch down here, it was within uh, probably two, three yards. So. Yeah, and I tell you what, Welgott took a, a lick in there, didn't he? So it'll be, it will be a 10-yard walk-off down to the 14-yard line. So it's going to be, Wow. Third down and 26 to go for a first down. He wanted going backwards. So first down yardage a long ways away. you got to be careful what you're doing here. You're, you're getting back towards that uh, Peoria Notre Dame touchdown. So they're going to quick kick it on third down. Look at that. And it's going to kick hit on the 50 and going to be down to the 46-yard line of short field for Notre Dame now. Well, there you go. I, I like that call, Russ, actually, because you're like, well, maybe we can get 10 yards back and then, you know, get a good punt off. But just go ahead and boot it right there. Switch the field. Got them out of the shadow of their own goal post right there. So Peoria will take over. Not the drive that Q1 wanted on the start for sure, but a penalty, a couple of penalties on that incomplete pass. And here we are. Notre Dame takes it over uh, at their own 47-yard line. First and 10 for the Irish. Again, their quarterback is O'Neill. His name is Liam O'Neill. I wonder if that's an Irish name, huh? How many teams called the Irish do you think are not green? <laughs> I don't think any. Probably not me. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, again, that wing T offense. Mullins has been causing problems for Kiwani. It's given to the first man through, and he stays on his feet. And he still stays on his feet, and he's going to be brought down, at, but not until he gains the ball out to the 47-yard line. That'll be a gain of... Uh, of six on the play, it'll be second down and four. All on again running the football that time. And the Boilermakers again have the wind of their back, but they're not able to use it right now. I think we're going to see a steady diet of running the football here. O'Neill, the quarterback, is going to give the ball to the the gentleman going to the right-hand side. Oh, and he's got a little bit of running room. He's going to be knocked out of bounds. And that was Hanley. 
they're using the edge again. And uh, Kiwani was catching it a little bit uh, in that first half. But, boy, not this half so far. They have really uh, done a really good job offensively so far and defensively for sure to start this second half. 12-yard gain on that play right there for Notre Dame as they take it down to the Kiwani 36-yard line. First and 10. 10-10 ten, ten left to go in this third quarter, and Notre Dame is driving. Game is tied 7-7, seven to seven, by the way, folks. With a football are the Notre Dame Irish. Again, wing T, ball's going to be given to the first man through, and he is going to be brought down. This time a shorter gain for him. And I believe that, once again, is... Um, I think that was all one again. Yeah, maybe three yards on that carry, so a good job by the Boilers D to drag down a big, strong back. They're, 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 it's a very strong team, obviously. Really, uh, they run the wing tee with perfection. That's their plan. They want to just keep blasting away at you and wear you down. So second down and seven again at the Kiwani 33-yard line. 9.30 left to go in this first, or third quarter, excuse me. The ball's going to be given to the first man through. Flag in the play. And uh, they stopped the play, I think. And Offsides be... on Notre Dame. Pushing back five yards. So that's going to bring up a second and 12. And so that'll be at the 38-yard line. Again, as Jeremy mentioned, it'll be second down and 12. And the Boilermakers, if they had that play sniffed out, I think they would have stopped, if I'm not mistaken. Well, this is big. You want to use that penalty? You got a little younger, longer yardage here for Peoria Notre Dame. Pushes them back their direction a little bit. You want to use this and try to get off the field here before they get another first down. As they did for Ki against Kiwani. Uh, Kiwani had the penalty, the holding penalty, and they pushed them back, and uh, uh, they went ahead and uh, uh, were able to stop Kiwani. And Kiwani had to have the quick, the quick kick. Full house backfield, or should say wing tee. Ball's given once again to Hanley. And boy, he is just can't be brought down. And they keep pushing. And he finally comes, is brought down to the 22 yard line to gain a 16 on the play. It'll be first and 10. Yeah, back to that play that kept working in the first half for us, where they, they go off tackle, he cuts it back inside. They really have a nice, a nice lane for him to run through. There's a lot of traffic, but. He's kind of going through there unscathed until he gets, you know, seven, eight yards deep, and then he puts his head down and pulls some defenders down for extra yardage as well. So everything clicking right now for Notre Dame. Kiwane's going to have to find a way to get a stop and come up with a big play here. All one with that uh, run, I believe, is who it was, if I'm not mistaken, Jeremy. Uh, oh, it was right? not Hanley? No, I think, I think it was. It was I think it might have been Hanley. Okay, it was Hanley then. And the ball's going to be given to the first man through, and that is... Uh, Owen is who the running back was there. Gain of three on the play that time. Uh, coming into the football game for the Boilermakers will be Tyler Johnston. And he will replace Gandaria for Kiwani. Second down and six at the 19-yard line. They're in the red zone again. Notre Dame is. They're going to hand the ball to the second man through, and this time with the ball is the wingback, Mullins, and he's going to be brought down. He has a good job by the yeah. QND right there. They got maybe a yard or two on that, but that was that play that they've been having a lot of success on, and Kiwani stuffed it that time. They're, they're, Kiwani is uh, the line play for Kiwani they are controlling Kiwani right now, the line for Notre Dame. They're, 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 they got their hands on them a little bit too much, I think. We'll see what they do here. The man in motion, no. The ball's on the ground. Can Kiwani get it? Can Kiwani get it? Can Kiwani get it? They got it. It's a fumble, and Kiwani recovers that fumble. Was that the quarterback exchange, Jeremy? Quarterback exchange bad again. I still haven't seen a signal, so let's hope they're going ahead and pointing our direction, but... They're going to say no. It's going to be fourth down. Yeah, Peoria keeps the ball on that, so uh, wow. Peoria was able, they say he was able to gain that ball back. They lost about a yard on that, so it's going to bring up a huge fourth and six play right now at the Kiwani 17-yard line. And this is big right here. This is a huge play in this game with the football is O'Neal. He's going to keep the ball looking to pass. Going out to his right-hand side, it's going to be a left-handed pass. It's going to be caught over there. And he is going to be brought down. That is 25. That's Hanley. Caught by 
check that that was Allen, excuse me. Allen from the 18 yard line up to the five. So again, uh, 13 on that pass right there. Unfortunately, so first and goal, ball at the five yard line. I thought for sure they had that fumble. It looked like they had it, but they must have been rest wrestled away from Kiwani. See if there's a way they can stiffen up right here and maybe uh, jump, a, jump a gap and cause a fumble again. And here's O'Neal again. He's going to hand the ball off and keeping it getting close to the end zone is the running back. All one again. Coming in for the Boilermakers is Vanderia again, I believe. Second and goal. Looks like the ball is right at the one yard line. Yeah, big uh, big task right now for the Boilers to try to stop this team from the one yard line. And here we go. Well, O'Neal has it. He's going to go in for the touchdown. They lead it 13 to, no, to 7. Well, they're excited, aren't they? I would be too if I were them. Think they'll go for two here, Jeremy? What do you think? 13 to 7 now. Hard to tell. Looks like they're lining up for the kick. I think they are kicking into the wind, but... Not too far to go when you're at the two and a half yard line. You sure don't want to jump off sides here. There's the center snap. The placement, the kick is up and it is good. 14 to seven the score now. Well, Q when he finds itself in unfamiliar territory right now being down in the second half. I don't think we've been down in a game since Princeton. Princeton. Mm -hmm. it so was, uh, it's going to take it's going to take some effort, going to take some plays you know, to get back in this game and uh, try to get the tie back again. What well, was that short field really helped them out, and they that gives you a lot of confidence when you have that short field, and that's exactly what they had. Um, was it 53 yards, I believe, 52 yards for the touchdown um, for the drive? Yeah, 52 yeah. yards on that yeah. drive. A couple penalties. Uh, Q when he got out of the um, out of the locker room. And that couldn't get anything going. So we'll see what they can do on their second possession of this half. Iwani will have Mason on the far side. On the near side will be Peterson for the Boilermakers. And they'll be kicking off, uh, talking about, about the Irish of uh, Notre Dame from their own 40-yard line. Let's see what they do here. Field looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? Definitely holding up well under the wet weather, like we knew it would. You betcha. Officials are really huddled up back here in the end zone. Not sure what they're talking about back here. Six oh two left to go in the third quarter, and Notre Dame is taking a fourteen to seven lead. Tough, tough game uh, thus far. A defensive effort by both teams. Kiwani has played well, so was Notre Dame, obviously. See if we can get a good return right th right here, get a shorter field and a good starting position for this next drive. Well, they're not going to try an onside kick here like they did the last time. I would bet against that. Really? I would say they're not going to try. Okay. Yeah, I agree okay. with you, Ross. Okay. I, I don't think with the lead now, I don't think they're going to take any chances. They're going to go ahead and kick it deep and see if Kiwani can get a good return on it. You need to have somebody come and hold the, the ball. This is uh, – they did it last time and uh, they finally had to have somebody come and hold it, so. Okay. Deception, let's see what they do here. Notre Dame is bunched up real tight. Let's see what they call. And uh, now they're gonna go ahead and kick. And uh, kicker is Awan again and here he comes and he's going to kick it long. It's going to be at the 12 yard line. Kiwani gets it and uh, gets it up the middle. He's going to keep on his feet. Now we're going to have a flag on the play up to the 34 yard line is where the return is. Again, a return of about 24 yards. It was a nice play that time by the Boilermakers. Mason, I believe, caught that one and found a lane scooted it up to the 34 yard line. We'll see what the penalty is here. Whatever it is, it'll be first and 10 for Kiwani, even if it's a 10-yard penalty for a 
Let's see what they do here. A hold by Kiwani. So it'll be from the spot of infraction. This will be back to the 20-yard line where it will be first and 10 for Kiwani. Oh, wait. That, this is a 15-yard. No. It's a... a Kiwani's starting back inside their own 20 again. So really bad field position to start off this drive. We've got to get something positive going early on in this drive. Field position is so important in high school football, and that's exactly what you're seeing again. This is the second... Uh, uh, the the second drive in a row. Well, Kiwani, of course, caused their own problems to that first one, but uh, here's the second one, and this time it's uh, first and ten from their own 19-yard line. I have formation for Kiwani. Ball is given to the running back, Kiwani's, uh, and I believe that was Duarte. Looked like Duarte up the middle for about five yards on that carry. So it'll be second down and five for the Bullers, and I think it's safe to say Kiwani needs to get some positive yardage here. Get the ball out and Maybe get a touchdown here. Let's see what they do. So the Boilermakers again with 5.30 left to go. Again, they've got the wind to their back here. They're trailing in this game 14-7 to to the Notre Dame Irish of Peoria. Ball given to the first man through, and very short gain that time for Kiwani. That would look like Paredes. I believe that's going to be a gain of a couple on the play. It'll be third down and five, I guess. The only thing going to give them a yard gain. Yeah, you really got to find this first down marker on this play right here. You don't want to have to kick the ball back to Notre Dame this quick. Trips to the right-hand side for Kiwani. And the ball's on the ground. Clark picks it up, looking. Throws the ball. It's going to be caught out here. Nice play that time by Brady Schultz. He catches it at the 42-yard line. Tough play, tough catch, tough throw, and the Boilermakers convert and get that first down. Yeah, great great job right there. Good pass, good catch by Brady Schultz to move the sticks, get the ball up to the 42-yard line of the Boilers. 15-yard gain. 42-yard line, as you mentioned, Jeremy. So Kiwani with a chance. Maybe to get the ball down the field here. Clock running, of course, for 22 left to go in this third quarter. Again, Notre Dame with the lead, 14-7, to getting the touchdown here in this third quarter. Slot to the left-hand side, trips to the left-hand side now for Kiwani. One man in the backfield next to Clark. Clark, they fake the ball. Now they're going to, no, here's the third look, and now they do throw it across. It's going to be caught over there by Devontae Jordan. Jordan, nice play that time, and on big gainer for the Boilermakers. Wow, huge play right there. He went to his third, fourth option right there. He looked right, he looked middle, he looked uh, this way, he rolled, and then he hit Jordan in stride to move the ball from the 42. Looks like they're marking it down right at the 20-yard line. 38-yard so gain. 38-yard pass play to Devontae yep. Jordan. Great job by Brady, great catch by Jordan to stay in bounds. It got about 15 yards after the, after the catch as well. Stayed in bounds and... That's a big turn of uh, field right there for the Boilermakers. Slot left-hand side, slot right-hand side for the Kiwani Boilermakers. Women in the backfield, and that would be Duarte. Now looking to pass. Now it's kept by Brady Clark. He cuts across, oh. and he fumbles the ball. Who has it? They're saying. It looked like Kiwani jumped on it right away. I thought so, too, but Peoria Notre Dame is saying they've got the football. Let's see who has it. And it, it, Kiwani does keep it. That's the first fumble by Kiwani. On the evening, it's like about a four-yard gain on that. Um, yeah. Who did? Was that Brady? Clark? Brady had the ball. Okay, yep. and he was knocked out of his hand as he was running. Uh, Three twenty-three left to go in this third quarter. Ooh, yeah. averted disaster right there by keeping that ball. But it was on, it was definitely on the ground. But it looked like one of the Boilers linemen jumped right on it. Uh, all the Notre Dame players were pointing their way, but it, luckily the Q and player held on to it, so it'll be second and six at the 16-yard line. Devontae Jordan comes in the game. He split out to the near side, trips to the left-hand side. Under center this time is Brady Clark, and we're going to have a the, the flag. The judge threw the flag. There was still time on the clock, so it wasn't the clock. They're saying delay a game. There was three seconds on the clock. That's That's crazy. Well, they have to let the players know that they're not using the clock anymore if that's what they're going to do. We're not using the clock. 
Uh, that that's a surprise. Uh, that, that hurts right there. Yeah, back to to second down and ten to go for the first down, and and this time slot to both sides. Clark from the shotgun looking to the right, rolls out to his right, and now throws the ball over there. That's going to be incomplete. It was intended over there for Kiwani's, is that Brady Schultz, I think? No, that was Paredes, excuse me. So it'll be third down. This is a big thing to do, that's for sure. Need to get this first down here. Got two plays to do it. Yep, third and uh, third and ten, basically, for the Boilermakers, right at uh, about the 21-yard line. See what they dial up here on this play. One more thing, too, I'd like to mention, Jeremy, is you could go for a field goal here, too, because the wind is to your back. Let's see what happens here if they don't get it. Let's get the first down, first of all. Let's try, to, let's try for that in the tie for sure. Okay. Ball is going to be kept. And here is the reverse to, to Taylor. Taylor looking. And he's going to maybe be brought, he's brought down right at the 20-yard line. It'll be a gain of just one on the play. Also a holding call on that, on the Boilers' rust, so... They'll probably go ahead and decline that since there was only a one-yard gain. Mm -hmm. So it'll be third down and 20, or it'll be fourth down and 10. Let's see what they call here. So third down. Looks like they're, I don't know, is they're going to walk it off? They are going to walk it off. Yes, they. it looks like they're getting ready. No, maybe not. Yep, they're going to walk that back. So it's going to remain third down. Two plays for the Boilermakers now to get it up to. Looks like the first down is actually going to be at the 10-yard line, and they're going to be snapping it from the 32. So you got two plays to get 22 yards. Okay. Two slots once again for Kiwani. Back to pass is Kiwani's Brady Clark. Now he runs out of harm's way. Throws the ball out there. It's going to be caught. Oh, it looked like he was going to catch it. He, it was right there. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to, to get hold of the football. So it'll be fourth down now in 20. And uh, this would be a 47-yard field goal attempt. Again, with Kiwani's with the wind to their back. Do you throw the ball here? Or, or do you go ahead and you... Try a field goal here. I wonder what they're going to try here. Well, the winds are kind of swirling, and that's uh, really getting at the, the deep distance of a, of a kick. And I think you really want to go for the tie here anyway. I'm guessing they're going to run a play. Looks like it. Yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah, that last play, was it was in the hands of, of Welgot, but it was right in the corner of the end zone. And he wasn't able to haul it in and keep his feet in. So brings up a big fourth and 21. Back to pass is Clark, looking straight ahead. Now he's going to go ahead and he's going to throw a ball there. It's going to be into the end zone. Can they get it? And it's going to be there that's go. interference. There so we that's, go. Big interference play right there. That's going to bring up a first. That's automatic first down, correct? It is not an automatic first down. So 15-yard penalty for Kiwani. Does that mean it's turned over on downs then? No. Nope. It'll go. It'll they'll replay, but it'll be 15 yards up the field. Okay. So All it'll right. be well, fourth down and six. Yeah, that they are not. When Kiwani has their people out in their their um, what they're doing, and, and they're going out in their their routes. Notre Dame is playing the player. They are not playing the ball ever, never, ever. So I, I that's something that uh, is important. So it's going to be yeah, a fourth much more manageable six, yeah. fourth and six for yeah. Kiwani. Two sixteen left, fourteen to seven. Notre Dame with the lead. But Kiwani is threatening. With the football, the Boilermakers, they need to get this just six yards up the field, as you mentioned, Jeremy, to the 10-yard line, and they get a first down here. Dual slots once again for Kiwani. Shotgun formation is Brady Clark looking things over. And now he's going to run. Can he get it over there? He's going to throw it over. It's going to be oh, in and, and out of the hands hit. of the Great Boilermakers. Right there by the Notre Dame defender. He really laid a lick on the uh, Kiwani receiver, who's down in pain right now in the end zone. He uh, put everything into bringing that in, but he really had uh, the defender was right in his ribs on that. Couldn't bring it in. And it'll be a turnover on downs, and more importantly, hopefully the QA receiver's all right. Okay, so it'll be first and 10 for the Notre Dame Irish in there at the uh, their own 
16 yard line so they're a long ways away let's see if they're going to have a timeout called here on the field and uh, we don't have the uh, play clock anymore unfortunately uh, we'll see what uh, what happened there but uh, it's too bad uh, still Kiwani moved the ball down the field nicely they started with the ball again at about the what the 30 about the 30 yard line and they moved the ball down came within uh, 16 or 15 yards of the end zone unfortunately it stopped with a couple of really nice plays there a couple of nice pass plays uh, going through his progressions uh, Brady Clark was and he was able to get the ball out in the hands of the different uh, players and uh, they're helping the young man off the field hopefully he's okay it's Ben Taylor out there good to see him up and walking off under his own power and so it'll be first and ten for the Notre Dame Irish, Jeremy. Got to get a stop here, don't we? For sure. Yeah, we can't uh, can't let them eat up too much clock. There's 2:09 still left in the third quarter, but you want to keep them down on this end of the field, force a punt, and get the ball back here. First and ten for Kiwani, and O'Neill, their quarterback, is under center, and we're going to see a steady diet of the wing back, and he is going to be brought down. I believe that was Alwan, I think. Number 25. That, uh, 25, I believe. We'll say it's 24 there. And so it'll be a gain of... Gain of five on that, it looks like. Up. Second down and a four from the Kiwani, or from their own 22-yard line, excuse me. I would love to see a turnover here, though, Jeremy. Yeah, you gotta you got to start blowing up some gaps, taking a few chances and stuff probably because they will methodically move the ball down the field. Mullins will get the ball probably here coming up. Nope. And it's going to be close to a, for, a first down for them. So that was up the middle again. Oh, and that time. Oh, and again, yep. a gain of about three on that. Going to bring up about third and one. Opportunity for Kiwani if they can split the gaps. But, you know, they've been running the ball well f from the side, around the ends. And I wonder if they're going to come on the on the wide side over here, the near side, because they've been able to, to make some real good yardage that way. There's oh. a lot of things, uh, a lot of things that they, they have options with right here at third and one. It could be a sneak. You know, O'Neill's going to hand the ball off, and it's going to be, that's going to be close. No, it's going to be a first down. First down yep. on that, so we're unable to get off the field on that first set of downs as Notre Dame goes through and gets a first down on that. 115 left to go in this third quarter and they've got the wind to their faces and they have been really doing well with the ball and running the football. This is the second time they've had the ball here in this second half. Kiwani's had it twice and they've not been able to get any points on the board yet. Only touchdown scored in the second half was by the Irish of Notre Dame. 14-7, they've got a seven point lead here. And with the football they give the ball once again, and turning it up field is Mullins, and he's going to be brought down at the 37-yard line. So be a gain of nine on the play that time. It'll be second down and one. Mullins really does run the ball hard, but you got to give their line credit. They've been opening some holes, and all they need is a little bit of a crease to make things happen. 23 seconds left to go now in this third quarter and again Notre Dame really moving the ball on the ground. They've not attempted to pass that I can remember here in the second half yet. And now with the football, they hand the ball once again. This time is the running back. I believe that was Owen, I think. Good job. Uh, Boilers D right there. They stuffed that one. No yeah, no, no gain on that I don't think. Well, they're going to say he did get a first down. It'll be first and ten they stop the clock and that'll be the end of the third quarter. Uh, Kiwani will go ahead and still be on defense here. Another first down. Yep, they did a good job, but there must have been a little push by the offensive line to get him that extra yard. That'll bring up the fourth quarter. Kiwani entering it down 14-7. to seven. I remember a couple years ago when Kiwani played Plano in the first round of the playoffs. It was a Saturday afternoon, and uh, the Plano Reapers uh, had were went leading at halftime 14 to nothing. Kiwani scored two touchdowns in the second half, and then it got a field goal towards the end of the game, and they won the game 17-14 on a 40-yard field goal by 
Brady Clark, let's see what they can do here. Real tough third quarter for Kiwani. They had the window their back, and they could not take advantage of it, could they? Yep, came out with that first drive, went nowhere, and really kind of set the tone, and then Notre Dame methodically drove down and got that that touchdown after that, and they are threatening to do the same right now as they've got a couple of first downs on this drive. They started back at uh, maybe the 15-yard line, 16-yard line, I think, of Kiwani, and uh, they've moved it out with a couple of first downs. It's a tall order. I mean, this, this is their plan. They try to grind on you and, and just lean on you and wear you out. And so far, they've been pretty successful. You look at that line coming out, and there's uh, there's some big big dudes out there. So it'll be first and 10 from their own 39-yard line for the, for the Irish. And you know what they're going to do. We all know they're going to run the football here. Steady diet of that. There's no reason to throw the ball here. And the ball is going to be given to the running back. Kiwani comes out there. That's Brady Clark. He does a great job of of turning it in. But and now we're going to have a flag thrown. There was a flag early. I'm guessing that's holding on the Irish. But then a late flag came out. I'm not sure what that was. Well, the clock stops. If they can move it back 10 yards, it would be kind of nice, wouldn't it? I, I didn't see anything from Kiwani's vantage point that they did anything wrong here. Maybe maybe I'm mistaken. But the hanky's right here at about the 47-yard line. It's two separate flags because the first one came up early up at the line of scrimmage, and the last one came out late back here, looked like on the tackle. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask on Kiwani. So the offset. Offsetting penalties, and mm -hmm. just redo first down on that. The reason why we didn't see it was because it was in the middle of five guys <laughs> trying to tackle the uh, running back. So offsetting penalties, as Jeremy mentioned, they replay the down. Be first down and 10 from the 39-yard line of the Irish. O'Neill comes in with the play. We can't tell uh, what the amount of time th that's left, unfortunately. The officials have, have uh, taken that for themselves. With the football, O'Neill hands the ball off. Kiwani comes up, makes a big play. There's there, Johnston over there, pops back up. Also Duarte comes in, and also Jackson Hawkins, the three young men over there. That's what you need. You need a few more of those right there. Gain of really nothing on that play. Good job by the Boilers D. So second down, as Jeremy mentioned, no, no gain. Second down and uh, 10 uh, for the Irish. And they bring the play from the sidelines. Let's see what they call here. And uh, they're going to have the football, and again, this wing T formation. Ball is going to be given to Mullins. No, it's going to be kept. They're looking to pass the ball. He's going to throw out there. Nobody out there for Kiwani, and he is going to go out of bounds after he gets a first down inside of Kiwani territory. Nobody over there defensively. Yeah, he faked the handoff, rolled out that way. I think it, it might have been a pass option, but uh, as he rolled out, there was no one, no one on the far side of the field, so he went ahead and took the ball. Right about uh, 10 yards, I guess, for a first down. Right at the midfield marker, the nose of the football is sitting on the 50-yard line here. Again, first and 10 now for the Irish. That first time they had the, they had the play, it was alternating offsetting penalties, and the second time they, they got it, they only get maybe a half of a yard. And that one they got 10. Ball's going to be given to the first man through. Again, Kiwani really stuffing it up the middle, aren't they? Good job right there by the q &E d again. They stuffed that up the middle run. No gain, I would say. Maybe maybe a half yard or something on that, but that'll bring up second down and nine as they get the ball just over the 50-yard line. McLaughlin comes off the field for the Irish. He's their center. Now he's going to come back in. Second down. They're going to give him a yard on that play, by the way. 10.30 left to go in the football game. Kiwani trailing it by a score of 14-7. to seven. And tough, tough play for the Boilermakers. Let's see what they can do here. Ball's going to be given once again to Mullins, and he pushes it outside. He's got some running room, and he's off to the races. Kiwani cannot get him. Let's see if they can get him before he gets into the end zone. Yes, they do, but he gets it down to the 13-yard line. So that'll be a gain of 36 on that play. Mullins with the big one right there. They uh, they had a chance at him in the backfield, but he runs real tough, and he just uh, 
he advanced the ball up and yeah, all the way up into the red zone again for Notre Dame. That is a gain of uh, again 36 yards. Mullins is six foot two oh five. He's not a small person, obviously. Puts him up at 120 yards rushing on the yep. game. First and ten for the Irish. Kiwain needs to get him out, keep him out of the end zone here. Ball's given once again, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds. The running back there, that I believe was Hanley, and it'll be a gain of about. Devontae Jordan on the tackle for Kiwani. And uh, I believe it's a gain of seven, so it'll be second down and three to go for the first down. At the five-yard line. Clock stops going out of bounds. And once again, Kiwani with their backs to the wall here. Let's see if they can get him, keep him out of the end zone here. O'Neal under center. He's going to keep the ball. He's going to to give the ball to one of the running backs and it's going to be Mullins close again and on that play that they've been running yeah it's going to be a first down for them you know, that's one positive thing kiwani has been stopping them a lot on these runs but they just can't stop this Mullins kid still I mean he's been dynamic to say the least for Notre Dame indeed that's their style of play it's ground and pound and that's what they've been doing this second half especially Ground and pound, yep. That's good adjective, obviously. 9.21 left to go in the football game, and knocking on the door of the Notre Dame Irish. And this time, they're going to have that same wing tee. The ball's going to be given to the first man through, and... Ball. The ball, is it out? Ball was out. Ugh. The guy on the far side called the touchdown before the ball came out. So, touchdown, Notre Dame. And the Irish now have taken a lead of this game, 20-7, to and they'll be attempting the extra point kick. And then Kiwani's going to have to put some points on the board in a heck of a hurry here. Nine minutes and five seconds left to go in this football game in this Class 4A first-round game. And once again, we'll be Awan will be kicking out of the hole of O'Neill. Let's see what they do here. Here's the snap. And here is the placement. The kick is up, and it is good. 21 to 7 now. They've got the lead over the Boilers. They have really played well this second half. They have scored two touchdowns, one in the third quarter, one in the fourth quarter, to take the lead over the Boilermakers here. Yeah, tall order right here. Nine minutes left. You're really going to have to try to find some playmakers, find some big strikes. At this point, you just have to find a way to get the ball down the field. you got to get some points. There is still plenty of time. Uh, you don't want to, once, you want to get a score right here, though, of course. Uh, obviously, you want to get a score every time, Russ. That's yeah. kind of redundant. But if you if you give them the ball back, they know how to take the time off the clock. So yeah, they do. you feel like it's really important right here to go down and get a touchdown. Yeah, they've got, uh, they have a, a clock-eating machine, obviously. That last drive, I believe was in a 79-yard drive, if I'm not mistaken. And there are a couple of of uh, times that the Boilermakers hit them on fourth, third down and uh, long, and they were able to convert each time. The big one was O'Neal on that quarterback keeper when he went around end, I believe. They will once again will be kicking off to Kiwani, and they'll have the wind of their back. So Kiwani up short at about the 15-yard line, this is going to go long, I'm, I'm just guessing anyway. And the kicker once again is Awan. He makes sure that he's got enough room there to kick the ball, soccer style. And it's going to be long. It's going to go into the end zone, and it will come out to the 20-yard line. First and 10 for the Boilermakers. Tall order here, 80 yards for the Boilermakers to go on this drive into the wind. But it's definitely not an insurmountable thing. They've got a lot of playmakers, and you've got Brady Clark. I don't, uh, I never doubt a team that's got him back there at the quarterback. They do have somebody, as you said, I, I spy, and they've been spying him a lot. Uh, their defense has been remarkable here in the second half. Really, ever since the first drive, they've uh, their defense has played really well. He only had the ball with a minute left. 
Clark looking to pass. Now he's going to go ahead and run out to the side here. He's being chased, and he's going to knock the ball. No, he's going to be hit once. He's going to go down, but he will get the ball out to the 46 yard. A little bit of extracurricular activity there. Nice gain right there. Yeah, that was a big gain. Yeah. Good blocking downfield by the Keone receiver on this side. Really let, allowed Brady to stay in bounds and get an extra probably seven, eight yards on that. So that went up from the 20 to the 36. So a 16 yard gain. Yeah, Mitch Sager over there kind of gave uh, Clark a little bit of a shot. Deuce backfield for the Kiwani Boilermakers. And looking to pass is Clark once again. And he is going to be throwing the ball across the middle. It's going to be caught over there by Welgott at the 47 yard line. So it'll be a gain of. of uh, 11 on the play. It'll be first and 10 for the Boilermakers. Another first down. Clock stops on the completion. Nice yeah. pitch and catch right there. Colson, the nice catch in traffic right over the middle to get another first down. Boilermakers got a little something cooking here. 8.25 left to go in the football game. Kiwani trailing by 14 here. 21 to 7 with the football in the shotgun formation is uh, Clark looking. Now he's going to get the ball across the center. It's going to be incomplete. And that was a Pretty big hit on Devontae Jordan by their defensive back, one of their defensive backs. That was Jack Livingood. And it'll be incomplete, and the clock will stop. Second down and 10 for the Boilers. Going to call the play here. And let's see what they can do here. Split out to the far side is Ben Taylor. Wellgott will be over there along with Devontae Jordan. The trips to the right side. And now they're going to have Wellgott come over here to the near side. And I think there's a little blood on one of the Notre Dame players right there. Yeah. Uh, officials time out to let them substitute for him. He was already off the field. That was uh, he was he was taking his time getting off the field, and uh, the clock was going. Unfortunately, and that's not our, the fault of the people up here. It's the fault of the officials for Don to keep going. So let's see what they do here. Eight twenty-six. Eight twenty-six. They're putting twenty-four seconds back on the clock here, and that is not the fault of the people up here again in the press box. They let that the player for Notre Dame walk off the field with a little bit of blood. <laughs> Goodness gracious. It'll be second down now for Kiwani and 10. And now with the football is Clark. He looks. Now he's going to be hit. And he's going to be able to get out of there. He throws the ball over. It's going to be incomplete. Intended for Duarte there. Boy, oh boy, Clark took a hit there too, didn't he? It'll be second down and or third down and 10 for the first down for Kiwani. The ball is at their 47-yard line. Excellent coverage downfield by the Notre Dame Irish. Let's see what they can do here about getting this back. This is a, this is a very, very closely competitive team with Kiwani. Uh, and and I, this is a, a game that Kiwani, if they can just get some points on the board here, and they can get right back at it. Let's see what they can do here. Ball into the hands of Clark looking... That goes across the center. It's going to be caught over there. Nice pass. And that was Schultz who gets it at the 41-yard line. That'll be a gain of, uh, of nine, uh, three, tw uh, 12 yards. That'll be a first and 10 for the Boilermakers. The ball at the 41-yard line. Clock stops on the uh, for the first down. Big play right there for the Boilermakers. Yeah, it was nice. Everybody knew the pass was coming. He found a soft spot in the zone, and Brady Schultz brought it in. Nice job that time. Back to pass is Clark. He's under heavy pressure now, and he's going to be. The ball's thrown over there. It's, in, it's intercepted. Oh, shoot. That interception was by Bryce Seaton, one of the safeties. Yeah, it was a lot of pressure. They blitzed on that one. A uh, guy came in, one of the linebackers came in unmolested. And got right in Brady's face. He, he stayed on his feet and fought it off, spun a couple times. But he was in the grass trying to make something happen right there, as you have to do. And big play by the Notre Dame. Safety coming up and picking that one off. So the Notre Dame's going to take over possession uh, just inside their own 40-yard line. With 7.49 left, up 21-7. Need a turnover here. Need a turnover. Yeah, if not, uh, if not that, you have to get a quick three and out. So you can't let them start getting their first downs. 
like they have been getting. First and ten for O'Neal and the Irish. The ball is going to be given to Mullins again, and this time he has got nowhere to go, and it'll be second down. 7.42 left to go in this football game, and they lead it by a score of 21-7. to Good job right there. Ganderia had the, the tackle on that one to bring him down. Really no gain. Maybe one yard, I suppose, on that for Mullen. Blake Johnston comes out of the game. He'll be replaced by number 15, his brother. And uh, nice to see him getting some playing time, too. He's in quite a bit of these plays. That, of course, is Tyler Johnston. They will use all the clock on this one as they are trying to milk the time with the two-score lead in the fourth quarter. And they are using every last second, aren't they? And ball's going to be given to the running back. Straight ahead, I believe that was Owen oh, again. Blake Johnston. Not much there either, so maybe two yards on that. Going to bring up third and seven. Blake Johnston, the sack man for the, as Jeremy Peer calls him, uh, He's got the record for sacks for Kiwani High School for a season and career. He just had a heck. He's had a heck of a, a game, obviously. Biggie, right here. You gotta you gotta get off the field right now with this and get the ball back. They're down in seven, and with the football are the Irish. And Kiwani is going to fill the gaps. Can they get him stopped? They're going to be. Uh, it's too much, unfortunately. First down again, Irish. Big play right there, number 25. That was Hanley on the yep. carry. And they needed uh, seven, and he got eight. Eight, yep. Barely got it. They are really getting into that second level on a consistent basis. And it's hard to just stop people like that when you've got that big of a line. Down to about six minutes left, so if you go through the four, uh, four play progression again like that, if you can stop them on this one, what do they get? 35 seconds each time? Yeah, about that. And with the football, once again, they're going to hand the ball off right away to the first man through, and he gets through, and he is still on his feet down to the 35-yard line. Alwan just keeps driving. 14-yard gain for them. First down again for the Irish. 21 unanswered points right now by Notre Dame. They've been really running the football with authority. Have they attempted a pass in the second half yet, Jeremy? I don't think they have, have they? Nope. And I don't foresee that happening. Let's see what they can do here. Down to 5.20 left in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I thought this was a very tough draw for Kiwani right off the bat. Uh, Set eye backfield. And this time Kiwani comes in. Blake Johnson comes in. Give him a sack on that? He almost could. It was a oh, yeah. quarterback. Oh, so. yeah. I tack that one onto the career total. There you go. Uh, finally, a TFL for the Boilermakers. A, a pretty big one as well. Looks like about a five yard loss on that. Second down, 5.04 left to go. Clock stops. And then Kiwani's called a timeout here. So the Boilermakers, they've got time to do something. They've got to get it done in a heck of a hurry. So let's see what they can do here, huh? Yep. Defensively. Stop them two more times. Stop them two more times to get the ball back and. Give yourself a chance. Defensively, that was a heck of a play by Blake Johnston to come in there crossing the line of scrimmage. And it was almost like they were letting him across, but Johnston said, no, I, I'm, I made my way here. I'm going to come through. And nobody, I think they had one guy on him. I think he beat that guy really fast. So good job by Blake Johnston. They've had, he's been double teamed the entire night. They did have one pass down here on their first drive after halftime okay. uh, for a first down that went down to about the five-yard line. So... That's the, the one pass play other than that. Like I said, ground and pound. And that's what you're going to see two more times. But now they have 15 yards to get on these two uh, or these three plays. Let's get it stopped here and make them punt the ball. Or they'll, they'll probably want to run the ball. Again, fullback, running back. And getting again is Mullins. The wing back, and he gets through that second there. And he's off to the races now again. And uh, he's going to go in for the touchdown. That's a 40-yard touchdown run by Mullins, and uh, that makes this lead go up to 27-7. to 27 unanswered points by these Irish of Notre Dame. Very, I thought, you know, 
these teams have been very even from what I could see all for this entire game until this uh, fourth quarter, and then two touchdowns not scored. Otherwise, uh, different thing in here in this second half. There's a snap. The kick is up, and it is good. 28-7 to the score. You know, I was going to say that the Journal Star had mentioned that uh, this game was going to be 28-20 to uh, Notre Dame. I, I didn't want to say a whole lot, but that's what they said it was going to be in the paper today. Well, 4.54 left for the Boilermakers. See if you can get something going right here. Maybe a nice return, get a little spark back in the step. Yep. And uh, and go ahead and finish this game off strong. See if they can do that. That'd be nice to see, that's for sure. In spots, it's been a great game, but they're, they have played excellent football. Uh, everything going their way. And it all starts out with that line. That line has been marvelous here in the second half. I wonder if they got challenged in, in the, at halftime. What do you think, Jeremy? Well, they've uh, ever, really since they, they gave Kiwani that short field on the opening, uh, Kiwani's opening drive, ever since then they've really stiffened up. Kiwani did move the ball a little bit at the end of the first half uh, when they were going through the air, but mm -hmm. were unable to get a score, so we went in tied 7-7. Seven to seven. But then the second half here has been all Notre Dame. Mm hmm so they'll be getting ready to kick the ball off here. And that'll be all one again. Wind at his back. Last time was a touchback. The ball hit on like the five-yard line or maybe the eight-yard line and then rolled into the end zone. So I wonder if Kiwani will be able to get this. Maybe run it back. Let's see what they can do here. And here we go again. One again will be kicking it soccer style. And they do, and it is. And it actually bounced off a Kiwani player. Ooh, Kiwani got the ball back. I think they got the ball back yeah, over on the other side, but yeah, they kicked that right at the front line. It bounced off the Kiwani player, bounced back at Notre Dame, but the Kiwani player, maybe Landon Mason, is coming over from that area. I think he was able to corral it in. So it's going to be great starting field position for the Boilermakers at their own 48-yard line. Let's see if they can get some points on the board here, like you mentioned, Jeremy. <clears throat> Coming off the field, Landon Mason and Alex Duarte for Kiwani. Still 4.51 left in the game. Yeah, there's a lot of time left still. First and 10 for the Boilermakers. Clark in the shotgun formation. Slot to the left-hand side. And 4.51, as you mentioned, left to go in the football game. And what what are they there's some issues. Somebody's not out there. Oh, it's gonna be Brady Schultz will come out to the game now. Let's see, hopefully they didn't don't get a penalty here. Let's see what they can do here. And with the football, Clark looking, throws the ball out in the flat. It's gonna be caught over there and drug out of bounds as the clock's stopped on the out of bounds play. Nice job that time by Duart uh, by uh, Jordan, excuse me. Uh, Devontae Jordan gets the ball. It's going to be second down and five. And that's going to make it. They've been playing up pretty tight, uh, Jeremy. I'm wondering if maybe if Kiwani can get the ball out there in the in the flat and, uh, and and make some couple moves here and there. Second down and five. Clark back to pass. Going to be thrown out there. It's going to be caught by Taylor. And he is going to be brought down. And uh, it's going to be a loss on the play, it looks like. Threw it back across the field, but there was two defenders waiting there for Taylor, who I'd say there's about a one-year loss. Going to bring up third and seven. Now for the Boilermakers right at the 49-yard line of Notre Dame. Slot to the right-hand side. And now back to pass is Clark. And he's got people all over him, and he still gets out there. Can he throw it? No, he cannot. He's going to be brought down. It'll be fourth down, maybe a gain of a yard in that play. No place to go that time and he had somebody he thought was opening up was starting to clear and unfortunately couldn't do it so fourth down for the Boilermakers. Yeah he had one of the Irish players draped around his waist right there nothing he could really do he jumped forward for about a yard which brings up fourth and six for the Boilermakers so let's go ahead and get this first down and keep the drive rolling and once again here we go Clark back to pass and he is going to throw the ball in the flat. It's going to be caught over there. Can they get the first? He gets the first down. So the Boilermakers 
Keep it going. Goes out of bounds. It stops the clock. And that was Paredes once again. Paredes has made some wonderful catches this year and uh, some excellent runs, too, for that matter. First and 10 for Kiwani. 3.32 left to go in the football game. And Taylor will be split out to the right-hand side. Check that. Taylor will be in the backfield. And uh, the ball is going to be thrown out there. It's going to be caught by Devontae Jordan. He makes people miss, and now he's going to be brought down. A short gain for him to the 41-yard line. It'll be second down and nine. And with 3-12 left to go in the football game, Deuce backfield once again. Kiwani has it. Clark looking. Now he's going to throw the ball out there. It's going to be caught. No, I'm sorry, incomplete. Intended for Brady Schultz. It's incomplete at the 34-yard line, it looks like. Clock stops on the incompleted pass. It'll be third down for the Boilermakers. 3.04 left in the game, third and nine on this play for the Boilers. Look at this beautiful stadium. It's not stadium, but the uh, QA High School uh, School Stadium is just wonderful. And uh, all the nice things over here with the football is uh, Clark. He's going to get to Devontae Jordan, the first down, and he's going to be brought down, but not before he gets it inside the 25 yard line. It's going to be. First and ten for the Boilermakers, and Jordan's down. 17-yard gain on that. And I wonder if they're going to make the Boilers use a timeout here. Hopefully Jordan's okay. 2.57 left on the clock right now. Mm -hmm. They're out attending to Jordan. Hopefully he is all right. 77 yards receiving on the night on five catches for Devontae Jordan. He's had a nice... Night, and he's just a junior. He'll be back next year. One thing that, that Clark has got going for him is not just his height, but his ability to read, to see what's opening up and, and anticipate. And he has been able to do that, and it's been uh, a marvelous thing for him. And Devontae Jordan is up, and it looks like. and uh, Coming off under his own power, yeah. jogging off the field, so looks like he's going to be all right. That's a good thing. Yes, it is. So it'll be first and ten for the Boilermakers. 2.57 left to go in the football game. As, mar as, uh, uh, as marvelous as Kiwani has played all year, unfortunately they're kind of in a situation now where it's uh, you got to get it going. Okay. And now they bring the Irish back onto the field. And there's the clock starts up again. Once again, this shotgun formation. Clark looking. He's going to put the ball over there. It's going to be caught. And uh, and uh, is it Schultz, I think? Yeah, Schultz, Schultz again. That, probably they should, forward progress should give him about five, six yards on that. No, actually maybe about seven yards on that. Yep, so it'll be second down for the Boilers. And again, the clock still running. Clark in the shotgun again. In the gun, looking now. And now he looks to maybe... And he will run the ball down to the 10, down to the 5. Can he get in the end zone? He does! That's a touchdown. Nope, they're going to say he's out of bounds. I think he's going to mark him just short, right about the 1-yard line. He was diving for the pylon on that. Thought he was going to go out of bounds about the 8-yard line, but he uh, made another cut up field. Nice cut up field. Dove for the pylon. They're marking him down at the 1-yard line. So 219 left in the game. 27 Notre Dame, but the Boilers are threatening here at the 1-yard line. 219 left to go, and it's going to be first and goal for the Boilers. Slot right side and left side. Ball kept by Clark. Can he get in? No, he cannot. So, he, he want to try a timeout here, do you think? Or are they going to go ahead and hit, gonna let the clock run? And uh, Colson Walgott gets the play, comes in, and he's going to give the information to his teammates. No yeah. two-minute warning in high school football nope. as uh, the clock ticks under two minutes. And once again, this time now, Wellgott is behind the line scrimmage. And with it is Clark. Can he get in the end zone? He's close. Yeah, he got in there. And he gets in for the end zone. Well, they haven't, they haven't, <laughs> they're actually not putting their hands up yet. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Nope, at the okay. six-inch line, I guess. Third and goal. 125 left to go in this football game. Every yard is tough to get against this team. 
with the football is Clark. Now he's going to have the football, and he's going to be hit and brought down out of bounds. Yep, he's brought down. It'll be fourth down and goal for Kiwani. Lost about five yards on that. Yep. Every yard against this team is tough. They're, they have really, their defense has really dialed it up against Kiwani. And they're saying that he did not go out of bounds. So it's less than a minute left to go in this football game now. And Kiwani trailing it by a score of 28-7. Back to pass, Clark. Being just hounded out there. And he is going to try to get the ball in. He does. He gets it into the hands over the touchdown. Touchdown, Clark. Touchdown, Boilermakers. Well, that just shows you right there how tough it is going up against this uh, this defense of Notre Dame. It's something that uh, Kiwani's had a real tough time dealing with. They had that one yard, and it took them four plays to get it in from there. Finally, Brady was able to find. He had to run about 20 yards to get that, but he did get the ball in, so touchdown, Kiwani. And the Boilermakers will get that lead. Be down now, too. 28 to 13. I'll be kicking the football here. There's the center snap. The placement. The kick is up. And it is. Hit the goal post. Go no good. Just kind of indicative of uh, the things that happened tonight. I was about ready to say that's probably the last, uh, the last extra point that we see Brady kick of his career. And it just happens to doink off the in, uh, goal post right there. So the score will be 28 to 13. Kick no good. So 28-13, but uh, Kiwani gets another six points, which is nice. And uh, they're able to go ahead and, and get some points on the board, which is good. Uh, you know, it, Kiwani scored the first touchdown of the game. They scored the last touchdown of the game. In between, Notre Dame has scored a total of uh, 28 points, and that's the difference in the game right now. By the way, our... Again, our advertisers, we sure appreciate the, you uh, uh, listening to us, and, and uh, thank you to them for bringing you this game. People's National Bank Union Federal Savings Loan Association, Ace Hardware Distribution Center, and the State Bank of Toulon. But, uh, uh, again, the, the Boilers have played some outstanding football this year, and all they can do is what they can do. Even my pen ran out at the end of the game. I think, uh, well, guess I think what? it just kind of ran out here at the end of this uh this game, unfortunately, for Kiwani. And here we go. And the Boilermakers once again. Now, they will try an onside kick here, I'm pretty sure. Let's see what they do. And it is an onside kick, and it's going to be covered over there at the 48-yard line by Notre Dame. Make sure we don't blast anyone on the knee. And the... Again, the Big 12 Conference is just that, the Big 12 Conference. And uh, Brady Clark now has uh, 213, 223 yards, excuse me, for his career. Good job by him. And uh, let's see what Kiwani can do here. But I want to mention this, though, which is kind of neat to know, and that is the fact that uh, in a single season, he has tied the record by a James Hart with those seven points. He ends up with 119 if Kiwani doesn't get a, anything here. So it should probably end up on a, an exact tie for the season uh, season record. Yep. Hmm. It has it for the career, but for the season, it is going to be an exact tie with Hart. And with 30 seconds left to go, Kiwani's not going to go ahead and call a timeout here. And uh, somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose unfortunately. And the Boilermakers seniors have seen their last game and they have had a wonderful career. When they look back on this season, there'll be a lot of records showing the most points scored in a season, or in, in I should say in a per game average, uh, most points scored by one person uh, in, a, in a, a career, tying it for one year. Uh, most sacks by a, a player for the Boilermakers and uh, so uh, unfortunately the Boilers are going to be going in to the locker room but they've got a lot to hold their heads high four different uh, touch or, uh, uh, four different times Kiwani shut the other team out and uh, they've just played some great football and 
Uh, they beat some very good teams. A couple of teams that were uh, uh, definitely uh, were, were teams that made the playoffs, and they were good football teams. And, and all you can do, like I say, the schedule's there. You can only do what you can do. And they could not do anything uh, against playing in Aurora Central Catholic. They had nothing they could do about uh, playing other teams like that. And that's all they can do. So let's go ahead and give some stats that if you wouldn't mind too much, Jeremy. Well, I, I wouldn't mind, Russ. I wish there were some stats that showed a little better outcome. Everybody really uh, had high hopes coming into this game. Great game by Peoria and Notre Dame. They just really... Uh, really were strong up front, and they stick with their game plan, and the, the ground and pound just kept going. Speaking of the ground and pound, 318 yards on the ground for Peoria Notre Dame, just nine through the air, so 327 total. Leading rusher was Ben Mullins, 13 carries, 164 yards. Lawson Alwyn had uh, 19 carries for 52 yards. Jack Hanley, seven carries, 73 yards. Liam O'Neill had eight carries for 21. He did have uh, Blackford, one carry for five, and uh, Hoft had one carry for four. So 320, 318 total, 327, nine yards. Uh, the one, one big catch at a loss in Alwyn on that first touchdown drive after their halftime. So that is the stats for the Irish, the victorious Irish. Uh, over on the other side, he was never really able to get Duarte going after that first drive. He had a couple of big, big chunks, you know, first carry nine, second carry six. But after that, he had uh, 10 total carries for 23 yards. Brady Clark carried the ball 15 times for 83 yards, and Cruz Perez has had four carries, or three carries for four yards. So 110 yards on the ground for the Boilermakers. Through the air, 157 yards. Uh, he did go to the air quite a few times. 24, 24 times uh, Brady attempted passes. Jeremy using so 24, it. yeah, I'm using the abacus over here. Yeah, so actually, he he's using Jeremy's using his his mind, uh, which is a calculator over here. 12 out of 24 through the air for Brady. He did have uh, one interception, so 157 yards. So 157 plus the 110, 267 total yards for the Boilermakers. Devontae Jordan, the biggest receiver, he had five catches for 77 yards. Ben Taylor, two catches for 13. Brady Schultz had three catches for 35. Colson Well got one for 11, and Cruz Paredes had one for seven. So, tough night for the Boilermakers. It was, it started off uh, really well. You know, we jumped up. We had the lead in this game, 7-0. And uh, okay, sc scored the first first touchdown, as you said, and the last touchdown of the night. So, just a really, really impressive Peoria Notre Dame team. They were big, they were strong, and they knew what they were doing. And uh, really just couldn't stop uh, you know Mullins on that that counter play where he he kind of went off tackle and then they just had some sort of blocking scheme that was perfect. He just cut right up. There was like a like a runway kind of formed for him. They had some blocking scheme. Key one he could not beat. They had obviously their line was big. Their center, as you mentioned, is uh, you know is going to play college football. He was a big guy. And they, they did it well. They were well coached. And Kiwani fought as hard as they could, but just were not able to come away with the W tonight. Unfortunately, the Boilermakers played very, very well. Um, and like you mentioned, unfortunately, they they did score the first time they had the football, and then they scored the last time they had it. And it was a real rough, rough game. That that was a hard-hitting team. Oh, one, for sure. One of the hardest things the teams that we've seen all year um, but again, and this is nothing against Kiwani, you know, Notre Dame plays in the Big 12, and that is uh, schools uh, just like uh, uh, we talked about Normal. Uh, we talked about uh, all these different uh, teams they play. Kiwani uh, plays teams that are anywhere from, uh, uh, you know, 423, 394, 507, 319, 660, 515, and then uh, Newman Central's 210, 483 for ACC. Notre Dame says 563 point f uh, and 563 and a half. But again, they play in. The, it's a parochial school. They play in Peoria, but they can get as many players as they want from around the area. I don't know where they get all their players from, but if it's just Peoria, that's that's fine, well and good. But the rest of the teams that they they play are much much bigger. So yeah, they're going to take their lumps. But then it's like Kiwani used to do in, in the old NCIC, 
when they would play, um, you know, in 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 the uh, 4A schedule, and then they would play in the 3A uh, a lot of times in in football. But uh, it it is what it is. It's a loss. Unfortunately, it's our last uh, broadcast of the year, and uh, we're really sorry to see uh, uh, Kiwani uh, go down to defeat. They do end up eight and two in the season, and they played very good football all year. A couple of, of uh, bad things here. Only one turnover in this game. I thought there was going to be probably three or four turnovers. There was one turnover in this game, and that was that interception. But otherwise, there was no turnovers by either team. Yeah, great job by uh, by Notre Dame, and great job by the Boilers this year. Though it's been a it's been a great year to watch. Fun year. You can see they really they really enjoyed playing together. They got the most of uh, the pl- the coaches got the most out of the players that you could. You ran into a tough team right there who just really. Uh, wore you down uh, you know that's that was their plan and that's what they did they stuck to it it started out really good you know you were feeling great after that touchdown to start the game we, we stopped them on fourth down they went for a fourth and ten uh, through a screen pass I think Paredes blew that play up out there lost a couple plays uh, yards on it six plays later key when he goes in for the TD everything was riding high but they uh, Notre Dame stayed steady and and did what they do and they just uh, they just kind of wore out I think the Boilermakers, they didn't, I don't think they have nearly as many two-way players as Kiwani did. They had, uh, they had two different lines going, uh, most of them, for offense and defense, and Kiwani subs a whole lot in there, but at the end, it just uh, it really just kind of ran out of gas against a, a big, good football team. You're right uh, by saying that. Uh, I agree with you 100%. The fact that they, the, the starters that he gave me over the phone yesterday, and the, the starters that were out here, there were there were a lot of people that played just the one way, not not both ways. So, yeah, that 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 is exactly right. Congratulations, uh, this Boilers team. Though. I just yeah. want to say it again. I don't know if we'll get a chance to hopefully talk to uh, the coach or some of the players or not, but it's been really fun. They they battled as hard as they could tonight. There definitely was not a lack of effort. You saw that. There was a couple of plays that it could have gone either way. Uh, it was a really nice defensive uh, play by one of their cornerbacks or safeties down there. Ben Taylor had that ball, and he was going to bring it in. And they just put a crushing hit right in the back of his ribs, and he wasn't able to hold on to the ball on that play. But that would have that would have brought it within, I think, one score at that time, but or possibly even tied it at that time. I can't remember yeah. which way, wh- what time it was when that happened, but the Boilermakers left everything out on the field. you got to be very proud of this team. They They played their hearts out. Unfortunately, it just didn't go the way that we all hoped. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, we uh, we would have loved to have seen a victory. But, again, losing to a team like this is nothing to, to be ashamed about. Again, uh, I'll mention again, they play in the Big 12 Conference um, with normal community. Uh, again, if you look at these, these the enrollments of these places, 1,500 for Bloomington, uh, which is, you know, these are two towns that are over 100,000 people combined, Bloomington and Normal, of course. And Champaign-Urbana. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're the other yeah. teams on the list there. Yeah. It's the age-old debate, Russ, as you, you know, we can talk about it every year. I say it no matter if the Kiwi has just lost to a parochial school or not, but when you have the open borders, you can, you can get players from lots of different places. Mm-hmm. It's kind of special when you get a good group of kids like this together, and they all grew up in the district, and... That's where they're mm-hmm. from. They're not. Uh, they're not coming in or getting recruited by anyone else. So, hats off to the Boilermakers. I, I say it every year, pretty much. I think there should be two, two open enrollment classes, and then six public classes, and then they can still play each other during the year, like like they always do at the end of the year. They go to that that playoff. They uh, we go to this playoff, and uh, just have at it. That could easily solve it all, but. I don't know that that's going to happen anytime soon. It seems like too simple of a solution, I think. <laughs> I think you're right. Let me just uh, give the uh, the uh, people that were uh, were so kind to uh, uh, be able to sponsor our game tonight. Union Federal Savings Loan Association. Take charge today. Open a checking account with Union Federal and get some of the best fraud pre- prevention available. Visit online, myunionfederal.com. Union Federal Savings Loan Association, member of FDIC. Don't forget about the... Uh, Kiwani Community Unit School District number 229 allowed us to bring you these games. Thank you so much to the Kiwani School District for allowing us to do that. Also, don't forget about the State Bank of Toulon with offices in Galva as well as Toulon and in Kiwani. Thanks so much for being a part 
of uh, this broadcast. Also, the Ace Hardware Distribution Center. Become a part of a winning team. Visit acehardware.com careers and choose Princeton. And also, uh, uh, don't forget about People's National Bank. People's National Bank with offices in many, many areas. But it is the bank for all the people, obviously. And uh, our congratulations uh, to uh, uh, People's National Bank. Thank you for uh, joining us and allowing us to, to to bring you this broadcast tonight. Thank you very much, Randy Carton, for allowing us to do that. But uh, I don't think we're going to get anybody up here, uh, Jeremy. I think they're, that uh, everybody is kind of... A lot of disappointment, Oof. a lot of heavy hearts. Everybody yeah. had, uh, had, yeah. had big expectations, uh, expectations for this team. And I, you cannot fault the effort at all. It was all They left everything out there on the field. Yep. And unfortunately, it just didn't go the way that we had hoped. You know, Kiwani, again, was the number three seed in the bottom bracket with Rochester. And uh, I did think that this was, was a, a real tough draw for Kiwani. Um, as, as you and I uh, had talked about a little bit uh, beforehand, uh, Jeremy, but when, when you see a team like this who plays in a much, much bigger uh, conference and then they play in 4A, uh, it, it made it real tough on, on the Boilermakers, obviously. And Matt Taylor is going to come up and join us, it looks like. Yes, he's on his way up here. Good. Uh, but let me just make sure that you, that you know, uh, Kiwani was the number three seed, and uh, the number fourteen seed, I believe, is is who uh, the uh, uh, the guys were that uh, Kiwani uh, played tonight, the Notre Dame Irish, and uh, unfortunately Kiwani comes away with a defeat by a score of uh, fourteen or of uh, twenty-eight to thirteen. And uh, Coach Matt Taylor is joining us uh, right now. Coach Taylor, it, it, you know. It's always great to talk to you, but uh, you know you have. Uh, y- yeah, you're, yep. you're, you're, I know you're pooped. I can tell. <sighs> Love the jacket, orange with the the, the mighty the mite on it. It's yeah. cool. Thank you. You know, that team didn't quit. No, your no. team did not quit, and that's a, that is a testament, not only to you, your coaching staff, but to those student athletes down there for what they did. Oh yeah, it's a. Uh, you know, we just got done talking to them. We're going to talk a lot more here in the future. We got a lot of great things to say about them as a collective group. And we'll get together for uh, meetings, banquet, and so forth. But, yeah, they didn't They didn't stop. They didn't quit. So that was good to see. Well, not only that, but you had, uh, Coach, your team scored the first touchdown of the game. And they just, it, it seemed like that they were just, Kept back and forth, back and forth with their, with their their power, their power running, and that Mullins was a real load. I thought he was quicker than, uh, and but not not so hard to bring down. He was both. He was a huge guy, and he was also quick. Oh yeah, um, you know, first of all, hats off to I think it's Coach Armstrong um, and the team. You know, they were a very good team. Um, I, I tell you what, we we spoke to it. The beginning of the week, you know, playing Peoria Notre Dame, um, we weren't kidding ourselves. Um, we felt that it was going to be a good game. We felt it was going to be a very competitive game. Not as competitive, I think, ultimately as uh, the coaches and the players wanted. However, you know, it was a grind. The first half, especially, each team had three possessions each. And, uh, you know, the second half, I just believe they wore us down. And we consistently would uh, give up four, give up five, give up a couple, get them in a bad spot, and they would just grind the ball. And I, I think statistically they what maybe threw the ball five times, six times. I'm not sure what it was. But it was uh, – we just couldn't stop the, the run consistently enough to get the ball back enough. One pass the second half, and that was it. it the difference in yep. the game uh, – tell me if I'm wrong, but right. you come out in the second half – and it's seven to seven and a half. Right. And it's a, it's no matter what. The third quarter they get one touchdown. Mm-hmm. You get down the field and the ball is thrown out there. I think this is the third quarter anyway. Yeah. Jeremy and I were talking about that, and uh, a young man by the name of Ben Taylor. Yep. Had the ball in his hands and he was shellacked. That right. was a tough hit. Yeah. And uh, it, if if 
if he gets the ball and he isn't hit that that hard, right? You get a touchdown, and then it's and it's a tie game again. Uh, yeah, and you know what? The I will tell you the the officials did a nice job refing the game. You know, anything we passed to them, they would relay to the to the uh, you know to the other officials and so forth. You know, but what some of the folks were upset about, you know, they don't, I've, officials don't look at video, all right, but, uh, you know, we thought on one end, yeah, he got hit hard, but we also, we thought personally um, is that he was hit before the ball got to him, and so mm-hmm. that that was that was a little short discussion with the officials there. Uh, the back judge, he's not, he didn't throw the flag, but uh, yeah, he was hit hard, but, uh, you know, they, there's no video, and so it's not, ultimately that play in itself is not what beat us. Their ability to run the ball all second half and us not to stop it is where we fell short. You know, and, and you fall short sometimes and kids are disappointed. we we thought we would have a you know, a couple more weeks in us, but uh that's just how it is and so it's never fun losing but I will say we ended the season still working, as you say, Russ and Jeremy. You know, we still kept fighting. We ran two minute drill for most of the third quarter and fourth quarter. We moved the ball. We just uh, were unable to finish and, and catch back up. What really was impressive, though, at the very end of the game, mm-hmm. it's 28-7, to seven, yep. and it took four downs to get in the end zone. And I'm not putting anybody down when I say right, this. No. I'm just saying yeah. that you, you kept working at it and working right. hard and working yeah. hard, and you finally got the ball into the end zone. Oh, yeah. And we're not – you know, and that's uh, this team all season long – you know we've had few obstacles and uh you know and even though we've had obstacles we've continued to work to to overcome them and we're not going to just stop trying even though it's a uh, you know uh you know it's a it's a long shot it's going to be tough to get back three touchdowns but you got to get the first one in order to get the second and third and so but that's good and we're finishing up the season um scoring a t- scoring a touchdown and you know we fell short by Two plus touchdowns, just barely fifteen points. I think it was right, twenty-eight, thirteen. That's right, so. coach. Your first year as head coach of the Kiwani Boilermakers. I know you're disappointed. Yeah. I can tell. Yeah. But you're eight and two. Yeah. And I mean, you you can't do anything about the schedule. The schedule is the schedule. You can't right. do anything about it. But you're 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 eight and two as mm-hmm. as a head coach. Your first year as a head coach in Kiwani High School. Right. And I I think a lot of uh, of coaches would have loved to have had that their first season. No, yeah, we, you know, we're, we've done uh, exceptionally well. The coaches, you know, and I, my hats go off to, you know, Coach Conley, who's been, you know, really working uh, the defense well. Um, you know, then we got coming back. We also have Coach Chris Coase, who's been in the ears and the in my eyes, if you will, in the sky, and he's got a lot of great things to say. He's very uh, game management is great, um, and you know, the debatable whether I listen to him all the time, but he does great, and we, we get along real well on the, your headset. Coach Tavares, linebacker coach, you know, just energy, energy, energy during the game, and then our new guys on board, Coach LaFollette uh, and Mike Weir, both from the 99 team, and then uh, Coach Hahn, who's a new teacher, and then, you know, my uh, relative, my nephew, Max, who's been value-added this year as a, a full-time volunteer. So my hats go off to them. You know, we, we talk often. I've tried to be receptive to everything they have to say all year long. And we really, you know, minus uh, a point here or there, we've really got along well. And we've bounced things off. Um, you know, we don't point fingers at each other. And we, we listen. And uh, we've collectively made adjustments, you know, and we've worked together. And, and I think the players know that, that we, we've um, – there's no uh, – there's no excitement within the coaches because we're all trying to do the best we can and we work well together. So, yeah, I can't ask anything more for for the team. You know, eight and two, what a great start! And uh, you know, again, congratulations to Peoria and Notre Dame. Um, you know, they're again they're playing above their spot at five and four, and uh, you know, we wish them the, we wish them the best. You know, we wish it was us, but we wish them the best. They they had a nice nice very nice team. They're going to go a little ways, I think, before they're knocked off. Uh, they've got a very good – they're very well coached, mm-hmm. and they're a, they're a very good team, just like he is very well coached. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Yes. At the beginning of the year, mm-hmm. if I told you you were going to end up 8-2, and two, what would you have said? Oh, you'd be 
excited, ecstatic, you know. So, um, you know, and I say that because, <clears throat> did, you know, as a as a the head coach, and when you sign up for the job, right? Ultimately, I do not I do not want to fail the the young uh, men and women that are on the team, and so eight and two is is very good and very successful, and uh, you know, and even though it has not been perfect, you know, I think we as coaches, because it's about the kids, we want we do not want to be uh, the the issue. We don't want to be the problem. We don't want to be the reason that they don't you know succeed as much as they can and so i'm very happy um i do really i did really think that this team easily would be uh six and three or better and so it's not unexpected but the way what is so satisfying to the coaches and i think the community and i think the parents and i think the kids is that uh is that they rose to the expectations that we provided uh, in a lot of ways, both discipline, work ethic, camaraderie, you know, and uh, being good people, you know, and they're and that's that those are the things post football they're going to take with them, and I and I hope, as well as the coaches, that that's what sticks with them, you know, and it will serve them well as they go on to their next sport, you know, and some of them clearly out into the to college and the into the workforce at the end of the year, so. It's been great. So I've got one word to describe uh, the way that you practice and the way that you you play. I, one word it was workmanship. Yeah. But the other word I have to describe it is structure. Yeah. And I think that young folks today, uh, student athletes, they, they I think they crave it, and you've given that to them, yeah. and they will won't forget this, and neither yeah. will we, yeah. for as long as we live and as long as they will live, because this right. has been a marvelous season, coach. Yeah, it it has. Um, it's been great, uh, you know. All the and I, my shout out goes to the community, <clears throat> all the people that have come out all year wrong or all year long, excuse me, and uh, it's it's been remarkable, and we hope to. You know, to continue and to and to build on the on the program and build on the consistency, and uh and I I would hope too that you know people parents uh, alike and people in the community will eventually realize that you know uh, the Kiwani football program is a good place for my young son or daughter to be. The coaches are looking out for them. They're including them. They're trying to take care of them and they're trying to teach them uh, football as well as other things for life. So. You know, there, there's the one thing that the community and the folks can do. You know, encourage your young men and women to come out for athletics, you know, when you when you enjoy the, the people that are trying to lead them. Sounds great. Well, Coach, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having game. us all yeah. season long. It's been great. It's been, it has been great. Yeah, four shutouts. Yeah. Eight victories. Mm-hmm. I mean, record upon record upon record. Yeah. Tremendous job, Coach. Yeah, it's been great. And I want to thank Jeremy and uh, the radio station. And, and uh, the, the young men want to thank you as well, Jeremy and Russ. Uh, uh, it, they, you've been very supportive of them all year, and we appreciate it. They deserve it, and so do you. Yep, and this won't be the last time we talk, I'm sure. So That's for right. sure. Thank you very much. Coach okay, Mateo. best wishes to everybody. Coach Matt Taylor of the right. Kiwani Boilermakers, thanks for joining us, Coach. And uh, Jeremy, we'll have a couple more uh, pieces of information from you, and then we're going to call it a night. Um, first of all, um, that, that's tough to have to to want to come up here and talk a little bit concerning the uh, – uh, the team and, and how they they did go down defeat 28-13, but they play good football and they've had a real good season. Jeremy, your your uh, thoughts as we end the season? Just a really fun year to watch everything you mentioned, all the records at the end. You see that the program's in good hands. You know, you listen to Coach Taylor talk, and you know that everything's going the way it, it's supposed to go. So, I think Huey football is going to be successful uh, for years to come. So are we going to be doing it again next year? What do you think? I sure hope so. Good Lord willing. And the creek don't rise, and right? the creek don't rise. Okay. And uh, I guess we got basketball to think about too. So Sounds good to me. But anyways, yeah, congratulations to the team and the coaches. It was it was so fun. You know, it gave lots of people uh, things to look forward to. I know the, the community was just a buzz, you know, all week. People were stopping me everywhere asking me, hey, what's going on with the team and everything. So, uh, you know, you really pour your heart into it, the, the kids did. 
but uh, they they left it all out there, and they should be uh, very proud of what they accomplished this year. I agree. We're looking forward to uh, seeing them, of course, in other sports coming up. Wrestling. Uh, I know Ben uh, Ben Taylor does. Uh, he wrestles and does a great job. Uh, and then you also have uh, 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 Alex Duarte is a wrestler uh, in basketball. Uh, uh, Blake Johnston, as well as uh, uh, Brady Clark. Uh, and I'm missing people. Oh, Colson Walgott. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of young men and uh, will be playing uh, sports after this, and we'll look forward to seeing them. And, of course, in the spring they're going to have some sports too, so it'll be a lot of fun. So uh, we'll let you go, and uh, we sure appreciate everybody listening on WKEI and uh, 1450 AM and 100.1 FM, WKEI. And also we sure appreciate uh, everybody watching at Kiwani High School Sports and Special Events. Thank you so much for joining us uh, all year. We do appreciate that. And uh, I want to thank our sponsors, uh, the State Bank of Toulon, the Ace Hardware Distribution Center, Union Federal Savings and Loan Association, as well as People's National Bank. I want to say thanks to uh, Jacob Doan, our videographer. He's done a great job all year under tough conditions, rain, uh, wind, you name it. He had it, and uh, he did a great job. We sure appreciate him. And also, for Jeremy here by my side, this is Russ Hughes saying one last time, good night and God bless. Everybody, appreciate you listening. 28-13, Kiwani loses this first-round playoff game in 4A.